What's happening, weirdos? This is the return, the return, return, I think, of my dear friend, Joe DeRosa, who's been coming up a lot on the podcast. We've been laughing about Joe quite a bit. So I'm so happy that he's here. And honest to goodness, this whole episode was like watching a great movie. He just has told the story of what happened to him with him in his life, not to him, but what's been going on in his life since he was last on, which was years and years ago. And I was like, this has the structure of an incredible film. And I was just, both Katie and I were just saying how much we enjoyed it. And I really, really hope you enjoy it as well. Joe is incredible and just a lovely, lovely human being. If it seems like we're breaking each other's balls or or whatever in this episode, remember we've known each other for like a decade, over a decade, and we love each other very much. So no shots fired here. Uh, Let's get to it as quickly as possible. Uh, I always have a stand-up show in Los Angeles at Largo every month. Uh, The last one, Bill Burr was on. We have had Mulaney. We've had Amy Schumer. It's always incredible. Go to Largo-LA.com for tickets. Whatever month you're listening to this, Largo-LA.com and look for Pete Holmes living at Largo. Always the highlight of my month. Hope to see you there. And if you're in Montreal, if you're a Canadian weirdo, go to HaHaHa.com or just search Just for Laughs Montreal. I will be doing a live podcast, live stand-up, all sorts of... uh, shows up there it's going to be really really fun hope to see you there or just for laughs cancun it's called just for laughs escapes we're going to be doing live podcasts live stand-up all in cancun so if you're looking for an excuse to get away and have some laughs look for just for laughs escapes as well all right everybody this episode is brought to us just one sponsor up top by our friends at living libations val and i are we're head to tail a complete living libations family we swear by these products they are absolutely wonderful natural alternatives to the random chemical nightmare hair skin teeth products that most people are buying at 7-eleven i realized years ago i was being mindful of what i was putting in my body in terms of food but i wasn't being very careful about what i put on my body shaving cream that are neon blue face washes that i thought were fancy because they were sold in outdoor kiosks and malls with french names but these companies don't give a they don't care about us I was gonna swear they don't care about us and they're filled with chemicals uh, linked to disease and toxicity levels never intended for humans I eat food where I recognize the ingredients and I want my skincare to be the same especially when it comes to Leela every morning because she goes to preschool now she we usually pick her up and she's in a in her underwear she, so she's completely exposed to the Sun And Val and I did a lot of research, and the only truly natural sunblock I've ever found is the I Love the Sun zinc-based sunscreen that Living Libations sell. A lot of them you see on Amazon, they might be natural-ish, but they're still filled with a lot of chemicals. They're just kind of skating by. The I Love the Sun zinc-based one is truly something I can put on my daughter and not feel kind of weird about it, let's be honest. I also use their ginger exfoliating scrub, which is the most badass exfoliant I've ever used in my life. Plus, I recognize all of the ingredients, the plants and the oils and the extracts, but it is truly wonderful and works. Their Zen Shave Balm is what I use to shave every, well, I only shave a couple times a week because I'm Lithuanian, but it's so clean and natural and moisturizing you can actually use a dab of it as aftershave try doing that with I I won't name a brand but you can't do that with the canned stuff this is real and natural and it works and at night best skin ever moisturizer leaving both Val and I skin looking great feeling great smelling great Uh, and we use that before bed but whatever your skin needs this is a great way to support the show if you would like to Uh, if you have skin needs hair needs face teeth baby needs living libations i promise has a premium natural high-end wonderful product to replace the random chemical nightmare they sell at cvs so show your support of the show and show your your support of your body go to livinglibations.com promo code for this month for august it's capital weird capital w-e-i-r-d 88 just capital w so weird 88 
and uh, and try it out. All of these products, by the way, they all last a really long time. Uh, so they some of them might like the sunblock costs a little bit more, but the, that little bottle lasts and lasts and lasts, and that's true of all of their products. So go to livinglibations.com, promo code Weird eighty eight for fifteen percent off, and show your support of this show. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoy Joe DeRosa. I always do. This was the highlight of my month. I love chatting with him. Get into it. We are guest. Be our guest. Put our service to the test. Let me get a water before we. Oh, there you go. Drink your fucking liquid death, Joe. Yeah, for men that can't just drink water. <laughs> well, <laughs> who are in, too insecure? Yeah. Make it look like it's going to kill something. It's, the first place I ever saw this water was on a clip from Steve-O's podcast. And I was oh, like, wow. Of course, he has some water that's like, but it, you're going to die. <laughs> I <laughs> might know, Whatever the hell. Because he's like sober, but you know. Well, no, we, it's funny. It used to be the sauna, and now it's liquid death because that's now the most notable. That, but you said it. That's that's good branding. Oh, if yeah. it's something that you have to be like, it's like making a pack of cigarettes that's vitamins. I'm not gonna wear. Just them. wear the fucking. I'm just kidding. You don't. Yeah, have to. I don't want to wear them. It's just you and me. We're sitting here. If I it was like four of us, I'd wear them. Big J Okerson, <laughs> Keith Robinson. Make it a real Joe DeRosa affair. <laughs> I actually hate, first of all, so happy to see you. Can oh, you, is this it? We're in? What do you mean? You've done the podcast like three <laughs> times. No, I've only done it twice. You did a We Made It Movies as well. Oh, you're right. I did. I did. And I have a movie you thing to tell what? you. You know what I did? Yeah. Go ahead. I did, I just, it, it seemed I, like I should have had a Glenn Gary uh, there, but I didn't. That's what I wanted to tell you. One, of the, one point of which you wanted to speak, speak to me to you of which... <laughs> <laughs> this came out a long let me silence the phone. This 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 came out a long while ago. I don't know why That's I never That's actually a good burn. I feel like if I was Seinfeld and you were Tom Papa and you were like, let me silence the phone, I'd be like, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm about to mention a Seinfeld thing. What the hell? Universe! <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> what the hell? That was weird. <laughs> yes. That was weird. I'm about to mention a Glenn Gary and Seinfeld thing. Well, we know Seinfeld together loves Glenn Gary as do we. That's what I'm going to bring up. But do you get the burn? I wouldn't worry about it. Let me oh, like, like my phone. Phones. I wouldn't worry. Yeah, about yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Like yeah, nobody, yeah, no, yeah. ain't nobody reaching yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. It's very funny. <laughs> it's it's very funny. Okay, good. Um, I can't believe I've never mentioned. I, maybe I have, and I just don't remember. But the, he does the comedians in cars with Mario Joyner. Mario. Yeah. What do you Mario? say? Do you I say, say Mario. Do you say robot? No, but Ma I can. And were you raised on the Lower East Side in 1920 <laughs> by an old Jewish woman? That remains to be seen. We don't know where you're from. I, we don't. I'm adopted. God only knows. Yeah, no one knows where it actually started. You're like one of those big bags of candy that you get scoops. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no label on your box. It's just scoops. <laughs> You got a or scoop the, of Skittles in yeah. there. Or it's like the place that I was like, here's a Halloween bag of candy. There you know? it is. That's it's what the, you are. You're a clear you don't Halloween know what you're getting. bag. Yeah. <laughs> the factory had a bunch of root beer barrels left over, and they had some Reese Pieces, yeah. and that's Joe DeRose. So um, am I, by the way. I don't know why it's so fun to make fun of how we don't know where you're from. I because thought I'm adopted. I was Italian. Because you're not adopted. Yeah, I guess that's the area. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. I suppose we're circling in on the area. <laughs> yeah, because if they're when you're not adopted, uh, you have two other people that can uh, you know talk about where you might be from. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. The most, the stupidest man. <laughs> oh yeah, because I could ask my folks, and then ask their folks. You're a bag of Halloween candy. <laughs> What a what a mean thing to say. I'm also a bag of Halloween yeah, candy. Uh, I just had two other similar bags of Halloween the, candy. Uh, no, no. It's a uh, but but the the episode with Mario Joyner, they talk about how they quote Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross all the time. That's right. And Seinfeld says, like, he's the one friend because we are obsessed with the movie. But then it they shows the clip and he's and it's like they're doing like fuck you that's my name and I'm like you amateurs buddy you amateurs look you know we both love the sign sure 
Absolutely. And I have the same experience because you and I, I'm going to say it, we've elevated quoting Glengarry Glen Ross. We're, we're the uh, something symphony orchestra. I can't even it's, think. We're, we're the best is all I'm saying. It's, it's we are. When they were like, always be closing. And I was like, <laughs> I don't think I've, I, I wouldn't go near and always be closing. No, I wouldn't go near that. Even I if gotta, there was like a double meaning, someone's closing a bunch of doors, I would never be like, oh, we'd be closing. I got to be honest with you. I won't go near the Baldwin speech. It's too obvious. I hear you. It's too obvious. We're knee deep in Arkin. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> I, yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally I mean, there. I'm, 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 I'm quoting Link. You're quoting the Baldwin speech? You can't, anything that was on a t-shirt, it's over. It's over. Coffee is for closers? Coffee's if it's written on a sandwich board in front of a, of a local coffee shop, you can't, it can't yeah, be in yeah. a Glen Gary game. Exactly. If it was a, if it was a uh, SNL sketch. Yep, forget it. Boss Baby makes fun of it, like because he's the voice of Boss Baby. Yeah, he is the Baldwin, voice. Baldwin, not Seinfeld, which I would have enjoyed the movie. Seinfeld. More. Well, that's B movie. I would have loved to see Baldwin in B movie. There's yes. your B. And, and uh, Seinfeld and Boss, Boss Baby. Baby. And <laughs> respect to Joyner too. I've never met him. He seems like a nice guy. But uh, the game was weak. I will yeah. say, out of sympathy, now that, I, that we've declared ourselves as the kings of quoting Glen Gary. Which I know we are. We are. Pressure's on, and I'm a little bit like, I don't know if I can do it today. And maybe they were having an off day. Well, we don't need to do it. No. We do it. We've <laughs> when, when Jordan sat down to do the last dance, do you think he said, I got to pick up a ball? He said, no, I'm sitting here. Ask me the questions. I'll yeah, answer them. That's great. <laughs> do you think Michael Jordan was nervous when that crew was, like, setting up? Like, Not uh, at all. Yeah. Not at all. He's the he's the most secure man that's ever lived. You think so? Yes. Well, when you look at the dress. Yeah. The style of dress. It's a zoot suit? A seven man foot. Man wore a Hitler zoot mustache. Suit? Didn't bat an eye. <laughs> Did Didn't he? Bat an, yeah. Did he? Yeah, you don't remember that? Full Adolf? <laughs> he was in a I guess he was a Haynes spokesman for a while. But uh it was he was a commercial for something and he had like the little Hitler? And that was like the running joke was everybody talked about like, what's going on with Jordan's There's guy? a lot of laundry slash Hitler jokes. Yeah. But we're not going to do them. Yeah, today. yeah, yeah. We're not going to do them. <laughs> There's also like stain. I don't want any of them. Okay. I don't want any of this. <laughs> I looked to Katie. <laughs> Katie got a chuck. We're not even doing it. We're no. doing Glenn Gary or better. Uh, yeah, most secure man in the world. Uh, he's, a, he's Tom Cruise level. I'm okay with myself. I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. Who, between T. Cruz and Michael Jordan, which of them has friends? Like friends. Like, Mikey, it's Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't on a team with them. They don't right. smoke cigars and play cards. They're just friends. I think Jordan. Over Cruz? I, yeah, yeah. Because Jordan came from... We don't know. You want to talk about Halloween candy? Cruz. Like, Where's Cruz? Where did he come from? <laughs> he was grown like an orokai. Uh, yeah. You've never heard him talk about his parents. Is that true? I haven't. Wow. You know, most people, you're like, uh, like, like, oh, like Robert De Niro is mysterious, but then he did the documentary about his father, you know? I didn't know that. Robert Downey Jr. talks about his dad once in a while, yes. you know? Like, it's like, uh, so and so will say something about it. Yeah, Dennis Quaid is related to Randy Quaid. You yes, know what I mean? Yes. Like there's there's a sibling, there's a something. Cruz points to a serum and not a shot serum, like a gun serum. They go, and yeah. you become Cruz. As a matter of fact, can you think of a normal interview you've ever seen with Cruz? There's a lot. Like it's a fun rabbit hole to go down is Cruz interviews. Yeah. And I like there's quite a few where he's he snaps and has yeah. had it. He's had it. It's a lot of, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of snaps. It's a lot of intense, like, and I put myself to that test every day. Every, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, there's a lot of that, which means, do you think he crashes? Does he ever walk around with bad posture, just eating Ben and Jerry's, just being like, Maverick, Schmaverick, I feel down in the dumps. I think it was, I think Walsh <laughs> and I were laughing about, I think it was Cruz, 
where we said he sleeps all night in the Batman upside down yes. thing. Wakes up, goes directly to another upside down Batman thing and gets into it. And that's his day. He starts his day. He moves to it. He's in an upside down. The alarm goes off. He wakes up. He lowers himself. Walks gently barefoot across his beautiful floor and just gets in another one. Wide awake now. (laughs) See, because we're the same age, we both have the same image of Kim Basinger. Basinger, Basinger, yeah. I say Basinger. Yeah. Like a zinger. Yeah. Like a zinger for your bae. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, bae. Hey, bae. Zinger. Hey, sure. Does it come in your size? (laughs) Bae zinger. Uh, but you remember when she wakes up after simulated sex, that's called, in the first Batman. Because I remember my mom read a review to see if I could go see the first Batman. Wait, what do you mean it's called, what's called simulated what, sex? What, what film critics mean, at least in the 1990s, when they'd say simulated sex means implied sexuality. Because in the first oh, Batman, actually. remember, they, you don't, there's no like, oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a condom out of the yellow belt. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Like that? Yeah. It doesn't happen. Yeah, Alfred brings a wet rag <laughs> for afterwards. It's heated, so. <laughs> his, his glasses, which have con- gone out of... Alfred's glasses in the original Batman went out of style, and I think they're back. Yes, the little, the like John Lennon. Little? Yeah. Thick Lennons. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> a little hot, Thick Lennons. Little Thick Lennons. Great title for something. Little Thick Lennons. You title the episodes? Call it Little Thick Lennons. I would, <laughs> we'll title this one. <laughs> That's All right. <laughs> there you um, go. So simulated sex, and then she woke up with a... Yeah. Uh, are you excited about Keaton coming back? I'm beyond excited. I'm excited, too. I thought, because I never know with you. It was fine. Yeah, or like, no, I know. Are they going to throw us every fucking thing <laughs> from the well, past? <coughs> but Keaton me. coming back is the thing I didn't know I ordered. And when it shows up at the table, I'm like, I ordered well. Yeah, like, I'm no, really I'm, I got to tell you, man, every time I think there's nothing le- like, like, so like with Star Wars, right? I was just going to go there. I know you like Mandalorian, but as soon as, I, at a certain point, I just was getting saturated. I'm not even sure. saying it was bad. I was yeah. just reaching saturation that when Obi-Wan came out, I was like, it's like so much candy. It I was can't so believe much. I want spinach and because it's, there's so much yeah. candy. It's and they're not it's not all great. Yeah, sure. Like I haven't seen Mando, it. Mando, yeah. Boba Fett, Obi-Wan. Once it's they like there's Mando a little bit Boba. of good, yeah. uh, but there's a lot of I don't need this. They're doing a thing. Well, I'll go back to my point in a minute, but they're doing a thing now with the Star Wars TV shows that I hate. Everybody speaks English. There's like no more alien language with the subtitles. And they're giving. I don't like that. Because. I didn't know I didn't like that, but you just explained. It's, I it like a fucks little. It fucks it up. Yeah, yeah. Like that's fun. And it when fucks Han it up. talks to Jabba, that cut scene. Or, well, there's other scenes, but when Jabba's talking in. In Hatis. Hatis? That's what it's called, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I, I just got but an erection. Here's the thing I, too. I, can't yeah. I, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> but here's the thing, too. Because everybody speaks English and they don't want everybody to be from England, which is the only space accent that should ever exist. Or past accent or fantasy accent. Yeah, exactly. I had a bit about that because you can't be like, you see that fucking dragon kid? Well, that's my point. They're giving people like southern accents in Star Wars. I don't care for so that. So you see like an alien with six eyes and he's like, hey, y'all get away from my spaceship. And you're like, this is stupid. Yeah. This is really stupid. I'm going to say something that someone hasn't said since 1970. When did New Hope come out? 1977. 1977. There were people that were going like, this is pretty stupid because they were seeing it, comparing it to other things. We loved it. It was new. It was fresh. Right. What I'm saying is it's always been skating on thin ice. I know that's yeah. hard to believe. No, it's But it's true. always been pretty close <laughs> to stupid. Yeah. And when you cross the line, it's, it's not a far trip to going into like, oh, this it's, was all dumb. They've also got this, and no offense, because a friend of ours is in Star Wars. Kumail? Yeah. I don't mean this offensively. Hey, can you edit that out? <laughs> he doesn't even talk like that anymore. I do impression of 2001 Kumail. Now he's like, hello. 
That wasn't good either, but I'm trying to do it like comp. Where are my weights? <laughs> deadlifts. Emily, deadlifts. But I they've got this thing with offensive. Star Wars. They've got this thing with Star Wars where they keep putting comedians into it, and it's fucking it up for me. Oh, I'm Burr. S- I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Burr with a full on Massachusetts accent yeah. in space. Yeah. Being like, ah, the Empire. <laughs> Oh, Archie! Sounds like Edith Bunker. It's outrageous. Yeah, well, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm supposed to use the force. <laughs> Who doles out the force? No, I'm serious. I'm doing your impression. <laughs> Whenever I say, no, I'm serious, I learned that from you. I'm very proud that I had arguably the first or second Bill Burr impression. Now it's... And now it's like he's so famous, it's... it's everyone. Everyone has it's an like impression. It's like doing a Seinfeld impression. Yeah, yeah, but... Uh, Santino, but, but Sant- Santine is gr- good at impressions. I Santino, think he gets the his best. Mark Normand is insane. Eh. Oh my god! Yeah, it's like because Mark Normand is like Nicholson. Everybody thinks they can do a Mark Normand impression. That's right. But when it's right, when you hear a good it's one. It's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Santino's is right. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of us doing Nicholson, we're doing uh, Slater. <laughs> yeah, who was doing Nicholson. Right. Admitted and, to and, it. And you're back. Are you yeah. dead? Oh, yeah. He said he was, Jack Nicholson was the greatest actor. He was his favorite actor. It was like, it was, you know. It Speaking was, of Kumail, uh, Hugh Grant, this sounds like a bet, is his favorite actor. This is going to sound like a bet, well, especially when he's growing up, kind of like new, you know, college, new to the country, watching movies, learning, uh-huh. trying to find role models, I guess, comedy role models, <laughs> idols, icons. Sure. Picked Hugh Grant. Go ahead and watch Notting Hill. It's not obvious, but you'll go like, oh, yeah, that's where Kumail got some of that, like, oh, yeah, well, I'm... Yeah. That's interesting. It's interesting. You would never guess it. W- Woody Allen once said that... Woody Allen is also one of was, Kumail's influence. Well, Woody Allen once said that he goes, I don't know why everybody thinks I'm so funny. I'm just doing a bad Bob Hope impression. And wow. in the documentary where he said it, they put a clip of him from Love and Death next to a clip of Bob Hope, and I was like, holy shit, he's doing Bob Hope. But it's but he's so Woody Allen, you can't see it until they show you Bob Hope. And you're like, oh my God, it's the same thing. Wow. Like wild. Like Truly. wildly yeah. identical. Wow. Um, I actually fly out of Woody Allen uh, Airport here in Burbank. <laughs> That's how much I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> the... Uh, uh, I was going to try to make some, you know, who else flies out of Woody Allen? I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. Yeah, it's like the, the Hitler laundry jokes. Yeah. They're there. <laughs> There's one there. But, but, but my original point mm. with Star Wars was when Star Wars came out, I said, the new ones, I said, this is amazing, and this is the last time my childhood will ever be brought back to me. Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill returning. This is the last time I will. I hope you like it, Joe. Yeah, and I love the first one. You liked it? And then it tapered off from there. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why you'd say that right to my face. You know, they, yeah. <laughs> well, Harrison, they killed you. Well, and then they made Luke an asshole. <laughs> yeah, drinking and blue titty milk. Carrie Fisher died. Yeah, that, they, <laughs> they, did, they didn't really do a lot with the legacy as much as they wiped their ass with it. You're right. I never really considered that. We're bringing Han back for his son to kill him. We're bringing Luke back to be a vagrant on a boring <laughs> island. The most boring and, island. And I, I actually, I didn't watch it, but there was a YouTube video where they were like, they were humiliating them, like intentionally, to like make a statement. This is going to get you wound up. Just me even saying I can't. That. Don't make me lose my don't, voice because it's already teetering. Uh, I already said you're like American Splendor. Yeah. Uh, it's... <laughs> It's constant. Ever since I had COVID, it's it. it you have out. long haul Joe DeRosa voice. Yeah, yeah. One of the symptoms. Remember that list of eighty five symptoms? That was like. Was there one? Well, there yes. was at one when COVID first came out. They were like, "Here are all the." Yeah. You know, they were yeah. like, "Are you not terrified enough? <laughs> Let us help." Yes. <laughs> yes. We're the news. Yes. <laughs> we're here to help. <laughs> were you relaxing just now? I don't know how people do it. Um, I have a bit in my act about it where I, I get so mad when they censor news because they'll say the video is too triggering. Yeah. And I go, I know what the goddamn news does. That's why I'm reading it. Who is walking around going, it's been a shit day. Maybe I'll read some news. <laughs> wow. <laughs> pick me up. 
I'm reading it to be, to be triggered. triggered. That's the point. That's like a warning on Coca Cola being like it may be sugary. Yeah, but um, but but anyway, I said this is the last time my childhood. Right. Then they were like, we're gonna do another Indiana Jones, and I was like, okay, this is the last time, and I'm I'm super excited. Wait, they're doing another one. Yeah, they're done shooting it. With Indi with Heron? Yeah, it's, he Heron? said it's going to be his last movie. This is my last movie. Which is perfect. How perfect is that? This is the last crusade, <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, uh, so, so, but then, and I'm excited every time. So there, I'm not, I don't do the... Any LaBeouf in that one? There is a picture from set that he's definitely not in it. Okay, no. No boof. Kate, Kate's saying no. The movie went vegan. No beef. No beef. <laughs> I'm excited every time. Then they were like, we're bringing back the Ghostbusters. And I was like, oh, my God, I forgot about Ghostbusters. Then they were like, we're, what was the thing that got us onto this to begin with? Keaton. Yes. And then after Ghostbusters, I was like, "That's there's no more childhood. And then they were like, Keaton. I was like, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, I so. think I was only there for Keaton. How you are about all of those franchises, I was only about Batman. You didn't love Ghostbusters as a kid? I remember being a little, you're a little older than I am, aren't, aren't you? I'm 44. Okay, so you're two years older than I am. Okay. Just a little, but that might have been important. Because I remember, <clears throat> this is going to sound so weird. But I, you're such a sweet guy secretly. I bet you're actually going to understand. I remember thinking Ghostbusters was a little too scary. And it is yeah. pretty scary. And to, for a comedy, for like a, this will be fun. And then that, that librarian, sh scared the it shit started out of the whole, yeah. this is scary yeah. thing that we've yeah. been doing since Shutter fucking Island. Yeah. No, Ghostbusters. Sh <laughs> fuck you. And I thought uh, Bill Murray's character, who I loved from... What was Groundhog Day before? I loved him from other no, things. No, way after. What about Bomb? It's all after that. It's all after. He's got, like, stripes before Ghostbusters. That's okay, then it. I, I don't yeah. even know why I like Bill Murray, but I was like, he's the funny one. I'm going to go see the funny one. And I thought he was mean. He's, like, mean he the is. whole time. He is kind of mean, which yeah. they call back to in the new Ghostbusters. I got stoned and I... I, and I it I, was an okay movie. Look, Ghostbusters has never been good since the first one. Nothing. That's what people forget. Yeah, nothing after it. Actually, believe it or not, the cartoon was pretty good. Oh, I love the cartoon. Yeah, but the sequel is not good. The remake with the with the all women one was not good, and this new one was like a serviceable paint by numbers reboot that is now going to have a sequel. And I hope, because I never lose hope in these You're types the of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I hope that that's finally the Ghostbusters sequel we've all really been waiting for. Yeah. But probably I'm gonna, not. I'm, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reach into the future and tell you it's not. But you know, it's it is what it is. But 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 I love Caden. I love I I mean Caden and there's pictures now out. There like, are. Because he's in this and then he's also in Batgirl. And they're doing Batgirl like I th the rumor is is they're doing Batgirl like basically Batman Beyond, where she's he's too old now, and he's got to pass the mantle to somebody, and he's instead of doing a young guy, they're doing a young woman, and it's Batgirl. Quick cue: Is her hair flowing out the back? That's Batwoman. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. What's Batgirl? Batwoman has a big luxurious red yeah. mane of hair because that's part of the disguise. Wait, she doesn't really have that hair? No, in real life, or, you know, her, her actual, who she is, she has, like, short, dark hair. Oh. So she has... So it's a, a little bait and switch. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, that gives it away, but I'm yeah. falling for it. Batgirl does have some hair coming out. You have to. Do you? Because she has hair. Well, Bat I guess you Batman. could tuck it in. That's what the cowl's for. I guess you could tuck it in. Yeah, tuck it in. You know? She's like an NFL player with Let's the hair coming out. talk about... Go ahead. ...the worst Batman movie that's yeah. ever existed. Go ahead. What Robert, I haven't eaten in days, Pattinson. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to pick that one. Oh. I, I've been meaning to text you because we're going to do some Batman videos. And I'm like, we, you called him Fiona Apple. Yes. So on the record, if we end up doing that, if you agree, I want everyone to know that was what you texted me. Please. Why? 
First of all, thank you, because you can't beat it. Why is Fiona Apple the Batman? <laughs> There's nothing funnier than that. I mean, it's... And, and why is Colin... What? Colin Farrell? No, Andy Serkis. Oh, wait, Colin Farrell, yeah. See? He's the penguin. You didn't even know it was him. Why are we covering yeah. him in nine, 90 pounds of stuff when we got Hollywood Boulevard's line with people that look like <laughs> yeah. that guy? Go to Little Italy. I mean, how many... Great penguins. I mean, there was rumors that, like, before he died, they were going to have Philip Seymour Hoffman. Amazing. Wow. Giamad would be a great penguin. I can't believe Giamad, who I'm talking to right now, <laughs> hasn't been the penguin. Um, if you, I'm throwing my hat in the ring. If you do Batman videos, I would love to, to play. To be the penguin? Well, you already had Patton play the penguin, right? Oh, yeah. I'll play anybody. I would just love to be in I'll, one of the videos. I'll do anybody. Yeah. I would love that. Uh, you know, I, I don't have to be a major. I just want to be a Batman. I want to be a character with a name in one of the videos. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like somebody from the comics, but it doesn't have to be, like if you got to give the Riddler to James Vanderbeek because you need clicks or whatever, I understand. <laughs> You know, I'll play uh, James Vanderbeek. <laughs> was a great pull. Was a great pull. Let me play uh, the the uh, who's 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 uh, uh, Gordon's partner, the the dirty cop. Oh yeah. Let me play that guy. You know, in uh, he's in Begins. <clears throat> yes. Like people think you're gonna open your mouth. That sort of when yeah. you, when you don't take money, people get suspicious. Yeah. Can I just say that he's got that the greatest line in Begins, by the way. Tell me when he's shaking down the falafel cart, and the guy goes, "Come on, man, I have children to feed." And, and he goes, "What? They don't like falafel." And that's how you know <laughs> he's about to be hung upside down. Yes, he's uh, the worst yeah, human the worst being. Yeah. I regularly, routinely, because I do a lot of kid things. See kids that look like that cop. That's a that's a certain face that you see on kids. It's these sad eyes. Uh -huh. Don't you know, like falafel? And like sometimes they have the long hair and a little bit of a wiggum. The wiggum nose. I met that guy. You the are actor. Joe. I, you I, are that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he was at a comedy show. I did. He wasn't. The actor was. What do you, I saw him from the stage and I was like, holy shit! That's. that's did you that point guy. it out? No, oh. but when I got off stage, I went up to him, and I, he's, in, he's in tons of movies. Uh -huh. He's one of those guys who's in, like, everything. But I, I, I had that week watched the movie Delirious with John Candy, and he plays the cable guy in it. Wow. And I went up to him, and I was like, hey, dude, it's such a pleasure to meet you. And he was like, yeah, you were funny. And I go, thanks. I go, I was watching Delirious yesterday. And he goes, like that. And I go, you played the cable guy in it. And he goes... Oh, 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 yeah, okay. Yeah. Cuz it was like fucking yep. 30 years ago, yep. you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I wonder what that's least. like for that. Like really, like is that a good cruising? I I actually would imagine that is a sweet career to be in 300 movies <laughs> as opposed to just being in like 12 as the lead. I mean, you know, those guys they're doing well. The the, the residuals, I'm sure, are yeah. pretty great. Yeah. You only need one or two bangers. And the rest are mash. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like... <laughs> now I get it. I didn't get it at first. I courtesy laugh. As a courtesy. As a courtesy, the courtesy <laughs> laugh. Go ahead. Um, are you, at some point, I'm going to bring this to you. My, okay, to fine. To Joe DeRosa. Michael Madsen said, though, he was like... he's, And I love Michael Madsen. He's one of my favorite actors. But he said, he was like... He's like, I don't care, man. I work. That's what I do. I don't know. You know, like his whole thing is like the dying, the shark that stops moving dies. Uh -huh. So that's why Michael Madsen will be in like a Tarantino movie. And then the following week, he's in like some like to be original action movie or so. You know what I mean? Yeah, like sure. he's just like, right. I'm, I don't give a fuck. Right. You know, I, that was, <laughs> I, I've quoted this so many times, but Paul Bettany did this podcast and he was like, I don't know where people get this idea that actors are out there like, choosing their careers mm -hmm. i know maybe a, a couple do but he's like for the most part i just say yes i'm picturing him saying this in the full vision makeup he was wearing the vision makeup <laughs> no he wasn't no he wasn't he's in the i don't know where people think you get to choose you know <laughs> is this too obvious <laughs> is this too obvious i'm trying to keep a gig 
Okay, roses. Yes. One, why did you bring Stephen King's on writing? I was killing time after I ate lunch. And what I you went for lunch? Something just horrible? It's so cliche it's me that I don't want to tell you because just you're going to make what fun it was. of me. I'm going to guess corn, corn beef sandwich. <laughs> Not far as off. As big as your head. <laughs> oh, wait, you went to Booze Philly Cheese No, steaks. no, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. Oh, you very close. Though. Roscoe's? Chicken and waffles? No, you were closer with Booze. Okay. I don't oh, know. Oh, you're going to lay into this. No, I'm just going to I'm just going to celebrate you. Jersey Mike's. You went to Jer- you flew to Los Angeles <laughs> and went to Jersey Mike's. You got an Italian, didn't you? No, I actually got a turkey and oh. roast beef one. Oh, okay. At least uh, you got to mix animals if you're yeah. Joey Rose. Pat dr- Pat Walsh I'm staying with dropped me off at Jersey Mike's and said enjoy your lunch. And I said, "Hoagie should kickstart my energy for the day." <laughs> I was kidding. I want to take a nap right now. Oh my god, <laughs> you are so roses. So let's 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 drop in. We're dear friends. I'm so excited to see you. Excited to see you. But I also I'm missing a lot of basics. What's ch- meaning like facts? We're real we're real guy friends. We talk about sure. the situations we're in, sure. the problems we're dealing with. We're always there for each other. That's true. But we don't necessarily get like the 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 updates mm-hmm. on like every single element of your life. So since you've done it, it's been years, and I'm just wondering, like, what's making Roses happy? Where's Roses been? Where does Roses want to go? Mm-hmm. The whole philosophy, you move back to New York, might well, be a good place it, to start. It's interesting. Know. I did. I moved back to New York. City? City. <laughs> uh, with the intention of becoming more proactive in my day-to-day life, career-wise, meaning doing more stand-up. I had a really good three-year run out here when I, when as soon as I landed, things started happening. At Woody Allen International Airport. Woody Allen International Airport. <laughs> Once he landed. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's you, you, I, you, well, I came out because you hired me. So that was the first thing. So that was my first TV. He'd buy my, him. He, <laughs> that was my first TV Real writing job. Yeah. I had written Here's for... Here's the backdrop. You know, yeah, there you go. Recognize. Oh, that's why. There it is. I had written for TV before, but it was always as a consultant. It was a week here, a week there. But So I got that job. I flew out, moved out for that. Within two weeks after being here, I got a new manager who I'm not with now, but she was great, and we did a lot of good work together. Um, within a week of signing with her... I landed the lead in a cartoon pilot for FX with, like, Jenny Slate and Sherry oh, wow. O'Terry and all these amazing people. Um, didn't get picked up, but still was cool. Two weeks after that, I got Better Call Saul. The vet. Yeah. R- did your show for the duration it was on. Went right into Wet Hot American Summer. Writing on that. You mean crashing? No, no, no. Oh, no, no. The Pete Holmes show. Yeah, yeah. Went right into Wet Hot American Summer. From Wet Hot American Summer, went into Jeff and some aliens. So writing jobs were one after the next. Yep. Got my hour special. Came off of Jeff and some aliens. Did some shorter writing stuff. Worked on Moshe Kasher's pilot. Crashing was at the end. Um, Went to... Booked the, a CBS I like that you sitcom. Could tell that I was like, when's crashing coming? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> booked a CBS sitcom, right? And, and which then, I still go. I don't know why. I know exactly. They, they why. trimmed the roses from that. I one. know exactly why. You don't trim the roses. I can tell you why. You trim the thorns yeah, around the roses. Yeah, yeah. No, I can. I can tell you why. But we'll, I'll tell you later. But anyway, the uh, and then and then crashing, right? And then. Came a very, very dry period, you know. I left crashing because I wanted to focus more on stand-up. All of a sudden, venues out here started closing that I got stage time at. Mm. You know, promises of you'll be on the wall next year at the store and you'll be a regular. Kept getting postponed another year, right? Character gets cut. From the sitcom, 
Mm. Manager drops me. And it's just a uh, movie. I, I, I movie. Never understood I understood the manager dropping. Again, why, it's why a thing just, I'll. I could talk to you about it later. Why not just keep? Were you? I said to her. In, oh, we, was, okay. I said to her, we can't continue working like this. Were and you then in bed she, smoking cigarettes? And I basically said, yeah, we yeah. can't keep working <laughs> yeah. like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said I'm going to leave New Yorker unless cartoon. we can do a better job together because I'm not getting the attention I need for these projects to get rolling. And then she called me and dumped me like it was her. I don't want to get into it. I anyway, understand. But um, so that all happened, right? Movie I was working on that I had sold just fell through, wasn't going to happen. I had sold a pilot to True TV. Pilot never even, we never even got to shooting because there was multiple talent. It was me and some other people. And negotiations fell apart in the talent negotiations, and not on my behalf, but on somebody else's. It was just one fucking hit after the next. Yeah. Uh, so and, you had this like great ascent. Yeah. Then a pretty steep descent. Yeah. And I did not like the day to day life out here. It's not my personality. It doesn't fit my personality, especially as a perpetually single guy. This is not a it's town. It's a hard place to be single. Yeah, very much. Yeah. And I was single here. Yeah. But you were also working. When was, you're working and you're single, it's fine. You know? You got to have one. You yeah. got to have one. Yeah, you can't be single and not working. Yeah, then you're just the guy at the grocery store <laughs> trying to get some kismet going with it's anybody you see. <laughs> I said to Dana Gould the other night, I go, because he was asking me why, when it went, you know, like what made you move? And I told him this whole story, and I go, Dana, you you hit a point where you're sitting in your apartment going, how many podcasts can I create? Like, it's like, you know what I mean? Because you're just trying to be busy. Yeah. Uh, and also have some human connection, I would imagine. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But, um, but this, was the, this was the kicker. Um, <clears throat> I, saw, I saw Bobby Lee. I just saw Bobby. Yeah, I'm going to see him later today, actually. But I saw him, and, and, and he really gave me an amazing pep talk. And he was like, he's, he, I was like, Bobby, I haven't worked in basically two years at, at that time. And I go, I, I just don't, I'm done. I don't want to be here anymore. And he was like, two years is nothing. Hmm. I went five years without working. Like, like, this is what this is. Something's about to happen. And I was like, okay. And he's like, go fucking work at the... The store won't pass you. Go work at the fucking Laugh Factory, man. And I was like, okay. And it was this great pep talk. And then I saw Marin two minutes later. because he I, was like, you should hang it up. <laughs> well, <laughs> It's funny. I had told Burr I wanted to leave. And I guess he told Marin. And I saw Marin two minutes after I saw Bobby. And Marin goes, so I heard you're pussing out, man. That's what, oh, I could have yeah. seen either angle. Yeah, and he I like. I could have seen the Marin that goes like. I fucking get it, dude. And he you got to protect yourself. Ain't nobody gonna look out for you. Yeah, no. He was like, "Come on, man." And well, then you I know said, "Why, Joe? Can I interact? Inter yeah, interact? Please. Interject? Because you're the best." Thanks, man. As you're doing all of this, I, you know, I'm always. We haven't yet done it, but there's got to be the Joey and the Holmes thing again. But I'm like, it's about you. It's over black, and this whole story of how everything was falling apart, and we start. Yeah, <laughs> the movie starts. And I it's would about love to the do, great rise of the roses. I would love to do something with you, of um, course, and I mean that. I always, we always have fun, and, and, and you can pay me in Fiona Apple jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, there's a hap very happy ending to all this. No, I know. But I'm just. This is the lead up, right? So I go to the. Marin didn't say anything else. Oh, then Marin's the funny thing was that he said was he goes. So what, what is it about this play? He goes, I get it, man. You can't get the charge here like you get in New York, man. I get it. But what else don't you like? And I go, I just don't think I'll meet my wife here. And he goes, your wife? Look at yourself. Which was very funny. Uh, that is... <laughs> That's the opening scene. Yeah, it was so funny. Joe DeRosa, yeah. look at yourself. <laughs> it's with Mark Maron. 
That, that's the opening scene. It's me. Oh, it should oh, be me talking, be to Mark talking to Mark Maron. And we're having coffee, and I go, I don't think I'll meet my wife. And your wife, look at yourself. And that's the end of the scene. Oh, it's a short scene. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like the beginning of Pulp Fiction. I know everyone says that, but you're just kind of drinking. You know what else is to be opening to? Bad Guys, starring Mark Maron, the cartoon. Bad Guys? Yeah, you, you see, because of Leela, I know Bad Guys. But there's a cartoon with... Uh, with, uh, what's his name, Sam Rockwell and Mark Maron are the leads. And it's a kid's show? It's a kid's movie. Oh, wow, that's cool. And it was really good. Um, Sorry. Oh, so Maron geez. says, we're getting to our happy ending. But so, I don't want to get so there anyway, too fast. So I go, I go, I'm going to stay. And I did stay for another year. And I did go work at the Laugh Factory. And it was the worst place you could ever work. <laughs> so funny. I love that this story to generations of Americans, if they didn't know what was going on and they just heard this audio playing from the clouds, they would just assume you went and worked at some factory. Yeah. And I like that your feeling toward it was that it was like working in a factory. I went in the show, like it was like my third spot. The sh and I remember, it's funny, the first night I had a show there, Bobby Lee was on the earlier show, and I went, to the girl from the box office goes, I have a note for you. And it was from Bobby Lee. And he said, oh, well, look who's getting spots at the lab. You know, it was actually very sweet. His advice. That's yeah. a sweet little yeah. moment, a little Christmas card. I have the note still. That's with like, I have a box of memorabilia. What if you're like, I have a box of stuff I've been meaning to burn. Yeah. And, uh, but I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, so, you know, nothing against the Laugh Factory. It is what it is. It's a certain type of club. It was not for me. And I just didn't fit in, and it just didn't work. And I said, after a year, I was like, okay, I gave it a year. Did you take your thermos and your lunch pail and just walk out with dusty boots? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Hung the hat. You clock hit. out. <laughs> you should have to lo clock in at the Laugh Factory. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah. Woo! <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> jinx. <laughs> we both, if my voice wasn't fucked up, I could have done it. <laughs> Every show yeah. should start with that. Yeah. And then... Yeah, yeah, you have you to... You ever notice that balls kind of look like, like... Like that's the yeah. factory starts doing it? You have to do your set sitting on an iron beam. Oh, <laughs> my God. Yes. Feet Tonight's lineup. Dangling. And your feet are dangling. Yeah. Like you, this... Dane Cook. Maj Girardi. I don't know who it is a lot. Uh, uh, so many of the people that... that when I was doing it more, aren't, aren't around. Anymore. So, so it gets the night gets darkest before the dawn. It gets darker, but then it gets very bright. So I moved back to New York, which is hard to keep you in the dark at that long. You got Fritos on your face, it's, and then it's so bright. It's, dude, it's <laughs> got a lit cigarette in your hair. The moving back to New York. I, I, I hate to give every detail, but they're all so important. The moving back to New York was the most stressful move ever of my life. I had almost no money. Like, I, I had just burned through anything I had acquired because I had been working. And the move was so expensive. And It's one of those brutal lines in extras where he goes, because remember Ricky Gervais's character, Andy? Yeah. Is trying to work and he's just being an extra and you know it's not paying very much he's like i got savings and his nemesis goes the pile it dwindles <laughs> yes, the pile. It's, such, it's, it's the most brutal yeah, thing to say yeah the pile it's it dwindles re and referring to it as a pile yeah it's just so it the whole thing yeah it's brutal so your pile and dwindled. because of the move I had done, I, I was moving right before Christmas. And because of the move and the way it was planned or, or timed, you know, the only way it could. And then it, it budding right but up against Christmas. I would have, and then it budding right up against Christmas. Your and favorite holiday. Me, my favorite holiday. And then me having to go home to my mom's for Christmas. I remember this on Christmas Eve. My friend goes, so you're finally fully back. And I go, I haven't slept on a bed in a month. And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, they took my bed for the move. I had to sleep on a couch. I got to my apartment. I didn't have a bed yet. I had to sleep on a couch, an air mattress. Then I got a couch. They delivered my bed the day I left to come home for Christmas. I've been sleeping on my parents' couch in the guest room. I was like, I haven't slept on a bed in a month. I haven't and, eaten in a and, month. Yeah. <clears throat> and on top of it all, I took this little shitbox apartment in like an old tenement building in New York. Why? 
It was easy to get. It was in a great location, and I wasn't going to be there because I was going to be doing stand-up. Yeah, so your cops, Melania, I used to call it cops apartment. Yeah, right? You just need a Venetian blind to stare out yeah. occasionally. And Holmes, I'm talking like truly, only window was in the bedroom, only sink was in the kitchen, wow. no sink in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like true, like low-level New York shit, you know? Yeah. And um, what floor? Like third, like just high enough that it was a pain. <laughs> You know what I mean? Not high enough to be a luxury, yeah. but not low enough to be easy. Yeah, yeah. No elevator. This is a great story. I My heart hurts for the Joe that was suffering, but I'm also like, this is a good story, man. It's going to, it's, it's so, so, and the, it was a dirty building. It was like a dingy fucking building, right? But I start doing tons of stand-up. I go back, Esty starts using me at the cellar, Paul and... Or Patrick are, are using me all the time at the stand. How that happened? Just out of curiosity, I, I, if I'm SD, Joe DeRosa shows up, boom. Is that how it happened? More or less. I love it. Yeah, she was just like. I'm not surprised. I was just pausing in case there was some. I like those moments where somebody like Jim Norton goes like, come on. You yeah. Know, you didn't need that at that well, point. Well, and that's the thing. It's like, it's like I had been gone for so long and that I, what I didn't realize was that my stock rose a bit. Rosa. Yeah, because, you know. Yeah, you had all these things. People hear about the It's actually cool. Stuff Here doing. in L.A., <clears throat> you, you're like, it's been five years. I was on Joe and some aliens. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And we're all kind of like, okay, what are you going to do next? Then yeah. you go anywhere else. It's like, you wrote on five shows? Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, it's, it's cool. fucking crazy, right? Yeah, it's very cool. And I'm glad you got a little, uh, uh, yeah. a little tip of the cap. And um, so I'm doing stand-up. I'm I'm walking. I remember one weekend, like, I, and I would just I would do those those two clubs. I'd do New York Comedy Club, and you could walk. So I was walking. Yeah, it was like decent weather, you know, for December. I was like briskly walking Can from I? set to set. It was exercise. I'm coming home. I'm like, man, I made fifteen hundred bucks this weekend doing fucking spots. Like yeah. this is stupid. I'm yeah. back, baby. I'm doing, you know, I'm like, uh, now I'm going to do the road and this and that, right? And I'm so excited. This was the right move. And COVID hits. I, how many movies should right. be made? Yes. Where that's the, the comp, that's like the inciting incident. Yeah. It's like, we have this story. We're invested. You have your shit apartment, but it doesn't matter. You're doing spots. You're wa taking walks. Yeah. <laughs> that fucking COVID. It hits. Roses is back. Yeah. <laughs> and the universe is like, got a mask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my shit. Hits. Brutal. And I'm in New York, belly of the beast yeah. of COVID. Literally one of the, look, I know it did fine. It's actually one of the first places that sort of bounced back, too. Well, because it was the first place that went down. Exactly. But I remember being glad I wasn't in New York. It all started it's, there. Even though I it's funny. York. We all said the same thing about California when it came out here. Because mm. we were looking at it like, Phew. we've done that. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it yeah. sucks, man. You know, like, yeah. but like um, COVID hits. So I'm in a essentially windowless apartment. Yeah. You're uh, in a tomb. It's, it's, <laughs> it's gross. I, it's cramped. I, I know this is the story, but I am just taking a moment to in horror appreciate that you rented an apartment on the full knowledge that you just would quote, and this is a quote, I'll never be there. Right. <laughs> no, you're about to be there for two fucking years. Yeah, dude, it's like, dude, because I, I thought, because I thought like, my, my friend who got me the apartment was like, you could break the lease, like, don't worry. You know what I mean? Like, he was, because he was a real estate guy. He was like, don't worry about it. So I was like, I'll just fucking crash here for now. I'll find something better. Yeah. And then COVID was like, no, you won't. Like, this is it. Wow. So I'm stuck in the apartment. Now, Combs, keep in mind, I'm not just stuck in the apartment. I'm stuck in the lightless apartment. The only way to get outside... I can't. ...is I'm to dead. walk into the hallway that looks like it invented COVID inside of it. It's that gross. And it's a time where every news thing is like... Don't touch any surface. You can yeah. get COVID. Remember when they were like, don't touch your face? That yeah. was a thing. Our kids yeah. are going to be like, mommy and daddy had a time when the news was like, don't touch your yeah. face. Yeah, wipe down your cell phone. 
I'm leaving the apartment for one reason and one reason only, to get food, groceries. Yeah. And then go back and, and hold up you, again. with you, they really are gross areas. Folks. <laughs> You're talking about New York grocery stores. Yeah. They're already like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is the worst case scenario. I'm sitting in my apartment. I had a mental fucking br- And I'm, by the way, I'm off- I'm not, I haven't I haven't been on meds in forever. I'm not in therapy. And it all just crashes down. And um uh I I had a breakdown on a Zoom with my parents. To the point where they were like we want to come get you. Your dad is the Billy Crystal thing. I think the I yeah, 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 Joe, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I call you back, they, they, they were like we want to come get you but we can't. Because of COVID. But we think you might kill yourself. Really? Yes. It was that bleak? Yes. I was literally on a Zoom going. He could take you on, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was going, I'm, I'm, I moved back here to do a thing that I may never be able to do ever again. Because nobody knew what the fuck was going on. Wow. So. What was that call like? Crying? I wasn't, my Angry mom, Joe, was, my mom was crying. I was like full on fury. Wow. Like, fuck this fucking world. If you're up there, fuck you too. Like screaming up at God and shit like that. And your upstairs neighbor is like, what did I do to Joe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like really dramatic, but like true. Like I True was Book of Mormon. Like yeah, I was furious. Wow. And The musical, not the... And then I had friends calling me, being like, are you okay? Like, Who called? Um, Give some love shout-outs to these people. Keith? It was like my cousin. <laughs> no, it was, yeah. Hey, yeah, stupid. Yeah. No, like, well, well, here was the big one. This was the main one. Okerson called me, and he was like, let's, let's go somewhere. Me and you and, like, Sal. Sal Falcano, I do taste buds with. He was like, let's... I call him New Pete, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's just because he's so funny and you yeah. guys have such great rapport. I'm yeah. like, fuck you, man, that's my guy. <laughs> it's only out of love and out of respect no, for his talent. I'm laughing. Of I know, no, I know, but in case he hears that, I'm not actually mad at it. I'm sure he would get it. Yeah, uh, but... It's like when you see someone else with, your, with one of your best friends, like having your rapport. Yeah, you don't like it. You don't like it. Hey... So he goes, uh, Jay goes, let's go somewhere. We got to get, we got to get out of the city. Like, we'll be careful. We'll all test. Dude, this was like, by the way, we had to get home tests through a doctor. That was like, these are half reliable. Like they didn't yeah. have yeah. tests yet. It no, was it crazy. Didn't exist. During so, that time, did, did Big Jay go from fingerless to fingered gloves? <laughs> I believe, yeah. Full fingered. No, uh, no, For sorry. COVID it reasons. was cut off latex gloves. <laughs> cut off disposables. We'll be safe. We won't share Parliament. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he got them from uh, Punk Rock uh, Hospital <laughs> Supplies dot, dot org. There's a way to do CBGB, and there's a hospital that's like letters. There's a way to do it. I don't have Something, it. Something, right? Yeah. CBGYN. S- Something like that. OBCBGYN. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we could get there. OBCBGYN. So... He goes, he goes, let's go somewhere and like get out of the city. Like we're going crazy here. Yeah. Dude, it looked like fucking I am legend. It was, it was horrible. Yeah. And it's uh, getting slapped left and right. Dude, it <laughs> was so, so wild, Will right? Smith joke. <laughs> so, so he goes, let's go somewhere. And I said, Jay, I'm embarrassed to admit this. I literally can't afford it. And he said, let me pay for you. And I said, no, 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 no. I can't do that. I'm humiliating and he said when somebody he said he gave me i forget what the story was he told but he said when i needed something so and so gave it to me yeah let me do that for you as a friend which was amazing yeah so we rented this house and i did eventually pay him back when everything settled but and that's what we were all thinking in well, this beautiful story yeah. did you pay him yeah back? i did i did eventually. with interest yeah yeah with no not with interest <laughs> Uh, Fuck you, you're the one who wanted to be kind (laughs) Here's your investment (laughs) Full stop (laughs) You don't help a friend to turn a profit Don't spend it all in the same gloves (laughs) Uh, 
so we go away, and where did you go? We just went up to the Catskills. We just rented a house, and um, and it was really good for the soul. And I really bonded with Sal. We weren't doing our podcast yet. I I kind of I was friendly with him. I didn't know him very well. Yeah. But we really this bonded. This is when you became taste buds. It's it's not yet almost. Oh, okay. Yeah. But but uh, we 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 bonded. We just really got along. And then, which by the way, if if you guys are getting along like this during this time, you deserve to be the new homes. Yeah. This, <laughs> this homes is a travesty. This whole time I'm sort of like, where was homes? <laughs> I mean, what do you mean? Where you you were dealing with your life? No, I know. Like we all I, it's not even, I spoke to you during all that. Yeah, we spoke. Yeah, it's it was a terrible time. I just wish there was something we could have all oh, done for. I wish you could have oh, been there. I wish you could have been in on it with me. Uh, <laughs> bait you, Seinfeld. <laughs> Take that, Mario. And, um. So out of that came this thing where we started a text thread and, and we we titled it the crew and it was like we had a covid crew finally this is so beautiful yeah and we had like a family can i slow it down a little bit what sure. did you do in the catskills did you because uh, we would do if you leave it to my writers it's gonna be shower curtain uh backdrop and you guys do stand up with a broom no, no. <laughs> <laughs> like i can't picture what you did we had um booze it wasn't a lot of drinking we had two nights where we like partied it up with drinking yeah um, we cooked it up a lot. featuring drinking. A lot of like group cooking. <laughs> oh, wow. A lot of like huge, like dinner was huge. It was kind of like in Goodfellas when they're in prison. It was like the event of the day was dinner. Oh, my God. Lo this is heavy. This is like the third act of Chocolat. Yeah. It's really <laughs> heavy, melting uh, my heart. <laughs> heavy There's desserts. Big Jay's cigarette dangling yeah. from his mouth, <laughs> flipping a pancake. Yeah, making crepes. <laughs> he's making. He's got to be making something super fancy. Of course. But, like, it's the yes. cigarette. Yeah. And they're immaculate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's Sal putting clams on his pizza. Yeah, Jay, half-ass cigarette reduction. <laughs> <laughs> At table side. Yeah. He has a pan with a, like yeah. a perfect reduction in it. Um, the <laughs> <laughs> Truly great. Um, heavy desserts. Like full like. The desserts were heavy or just lots of desserts? Like we got like sm like a smorgasbord amount of desserts. Like, yeah. a, like, a, like, like hotel casino buffet dessert. This thing. is as beautiful as Valerie's like girls trips to Joshua Tree menstruating in the <laughs> desert sand howling at the moon braiding each other's hair <laughs> titties floating in the hot tub massage circle. That would have been if that was a Holmes monologue you would have done it in the I would have. In the toucan voice. By the way Remember? Yes. Used to be a multicolored beak. God, she meant something in this town. Remember that? that was my favorite joke ever. I didn't remember. I knew it was referred to as the toucan voice. It's the yeah. Joe DeRosa voice. And I, it, we've been sure, yeah. posting on my Instagram old Pete Holmes show monologues, so I watched them to approve them. And I'm like, wow, I went to that a lot. And it really is a credit to you as a performer and as a writer that I found the Joe DeRosa attitude of like, you think you're going to do better. Like, it's not exactly you, but no. we wouldn't have had it without you. But we had, yeah, it was you the... You had to have... But the toucan <laughs> joke was yours. Sure. When we went to the zoo, the two the lions are <laughs> sprawling acres of land. You look over, the bird that can fly is in a... It's in a phone booth. Two by two glass yeah. cube. And then the toucan says, <laughs> yeah. a multicolored beak used to get you somewhere in the town. And, and your flute throwing the cigarette, yeah. as he said. God, I, I hope you feel that way about it. When I watch and, Pete Holmes show clips, I'm just filled with like... Boy, it was just a big sleepover. I, I it's the, they, it makes me laugh so hard. Yeah. And I remember Nate, uh, Nate and I forced you to put the snake room joke in, and it bombed. The but we were like, room. "It's funny, you're wrong." What was it that the snakes are st <laughs> they're they're the the guys in the spa? And I go, <laughs> you go in, it's a cobra with a towel around his neck. You can see his snake balls. <laughs> And we and you were like, that's not funny. It's not a joke. And we were like, it's fucking hilarious. 
And it, it ate it. it. It ate it in the monologue. We ended up cutting it out. It might have been my fault. We <laughs> telegraphed that little glint of, like, I don't believe in this joke. You know what I mean? Yeah. We should have flown you in, and you could have done it and flown out. It <laughs> but anyway, so that was a huge turning point moment. We, it's beautiful. It was it should awesome. be a movie. It was awesome. It's truly beautiful. It's funny. And there's lots of stories done- about steel magnolias and ladies uh. doing it, but this is very... Beautiful. When I say feminine, I just mean nurturing. No, no, I understand. Life giving. Men yeah. can be that way. We did three trips all together. The crew. Yeah. And on the third one is when Taste Buds was born. Wow. No, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. The second one. Okay. We were in the Hamptons. Uh, that's, a, that's another story for another time. Let me let me stay on track here. So, well, let's go to that story after this one. Sure. If we get to it. So. <laughs> We leave that place. I'm spiritually reached, soulfully, I should say, recharged. Yeah. I have people I, I am love just it. and yeah. I care about, and I'm not alone. And that's the beginning of the turn. So then I call my, I on that trip, Holmes, my God, I almost buried the lead. On, look at me, I'm, I'm the act of giving a gift away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Suck it, Seinfeld! <laughs> and for anyone wondering, anytime we're saying something that doesn't make sense, it's from Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. <laughs> uh, so, but that's how good we are at it because you got the words that I'm referencing were not the reference. Yeah, it was right. the tone. Sometimes it's just the it cadence. It was the inflection and that's cadence. Right. You, sometimes the reference is just borrowing the, the staccato rhythm of a line. Yeah, yeah. Wet out there tonight, perhaps? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wet out there tonight. Yeah, yeah. Cutty owl. Uh, Cutty owl. So on that trip. Get the truck. Here's where it all changes, right? Okay. On that trip, I get back into therapy. There we go. Via telephone. Yeah. This wonderful woman, Johanna, and she's like, calls me and she's like, they gave me your info and I can do sessions with you over the phone. Wait, your friends got you, Johanna? No, no, no. I called my doctor and then, okay. you know, healthcare stuff. Then, and she goes, I'm getting you back on Prozac. You, you, you got it, something, you're, you're off. Yeah. She starts me back on Prozac. I get the first prescription while I'm on the trip. Yeah. I go and I just, so I start the medicine for here in all ways and here with the friendships. I get the call on that trip from New York State, New York whatever, Gov. They're like, you are you have qualified for financial assistance and you can actually go on to unemployment now and we'll pay you it was like seven hundred dollars a week or something, wow. which at the time was I, I. I so desperately fucking needed money. Yeah, and then like, what was your rent? I'm just trying to crunch the numbers. Two, it was like twenty one hundred bucks. So it's like that's uh, that's like your rent. Yeah, it was basically right. Well, the, but plus seven hundred. But I hadn't paid rent in two months, and my landlord was okay with it. Oh wow! Because nobody was paying rent because of who is your landlord? John Denver. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Late rent in my mailbox. Yeah. Did I mention I lived on Sesame Street? <laughs> ah, Snuffy's uh, a very good landlord. Um, so that happened. I then, like, get the SBA call where they're like, you're incorporated. You qualify for a grant and a loan. So now all of a sudden I have money back in my pocket. Yeah. And I can think straight for five fucking minutes. Yeah. And I did what was right. I started paying rent again. I didn't fuck around, you know? Like, I didn't try to take advantage of anything. I was like, I need this to get back to where I need to be. Mm-hmm. So that happened. I got friends, and, I've, and, I, and I can feed myself. I can think straight again. Then they announce you can't get it from surfaces and all these things. Mm. Then they, the antibody tests come out. I get the antibody test. I had the antibodies because apparently I had COVID. Oh, wow. So, like, all everything is, like, finally just starting to brighten. And in this moment, I, I'll never forget the day. It was the day I found out I had the antibodies, and it was the same weekend they announced you, you can't get it from surfaces. And I left my apartment for the first time without fear. Mm. 
I walked around New York. It was sunny. It was beautiful. I went to, and you will make fun, Wendy's, and got to a square burger to go food for the first time. Yeah, because I wasn't afraid of somebody touching. No, my I food. understand. Even right? uh, even I can't touch that. Yeah, Joe. it's a lovely story. <laughs> and I went and I sat on a, on the steps of a building in New York and ate lunch, and I was like, I fucking love New York. And I called my parents. I'm, I almost started crying. I called Just my now. parents oh. and I said, I said, um, I realized something. I'm not here because I want to do stand-up. I'm here because I want to live in New York. Oh. And I was like, that's huge. I don't care if I can't do stand-up. I still want to live here. I care if I can't do it, but I... Yeah. That was a huge moment. And in then, the movie, you're on the steps of, like, the public library or something. We need some good steps. Yeah, and I it get up and I be- run and the pigeons fly. <laughs> <you know. laughs> and because you're you, you take one and dip it in ranch dressing <laughs> and just, just bite its head off like Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> and it freezes as the blood is squirting out. <laughs> the end. Some people stand in the darkness. <laughs> Baywatch theme place. Um... The greatest freeze frame ending of all time, by the way, is, is the movie Easy Money. Treat yourself if you've never seen it. I haven't seen it. <laughs> the greatest, greatest freeze frame of all time is the end of Easy Money. Well, I did tell you, let's, let's not forget where we are in the story, that I was like, I, I'm in need. I love being a dad. I love having a daughter. But I, and, and, it's not even but, it's and I just don't have any... I'm like a, I'm a Judd Apatow character in the first act where I'm like, I just need some guys. <laughs> <laughs> just need some bro time. So That's I was like, so Joe funny. will have some dumbass movie we can watch. <laughs> and, I, and I'm really excited. It's really interesting, man. Like, for real, for real, there's like, I, I never really identified as a as like a super guy guy. Right. But as soon as I was with two women and doing a lot of like nurturing guy, uh, girly, not girly, uh, I know what you mean, though. Fraternal, paternal, whatever. Yeah. Just, uh, maternal. Taking care of a baby and, and being a husband. When they would leave and would be having, like, the most idyllic days. And as soon as they left, I'd have, like, 30 minutes to myself. I'm watching Sicario. <laughs> like, I couldn't <laughs> wait to see the bodies in the walls. <laughs> I was, like, all the parts that I would w- normally skip, I'm like, show me the drill going right into the wall, whatever it is. I, I had, like, this weird... It's not weird. Yeah. We're like we're men, Joe. Yeah, we're men. You're cycling through the Rocky, just the matches yes. of all the movies. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And uh, there's been a real need. There's a need there. There is. There yeah. is. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> but you know, so we it's so also something women have. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, so I, um, so that was an amazing day, and that was a realization, and then. Cut to a few months later. It's the summertime. Is this the Taste Buds one? Yeah. Okay. I go right here. Let's go to the mid-roll ad so people aren't shocked by it. And when we come back, I want to hear the birth of Taste Buds on the second trip. Okay. We'll be right back. This podcast is sponsored by our friends at BetterHelp. Life is full of twists and turns. We know this. Stress, change, grief, moments of growth, and moments where we all feel like we're taking a few steps back. And it's important to show up for yourself through all of the struggles that life can bring. And BetterHelp Online Therapy is here to help with the twists and the turns and will assess your needs and can match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than four. 48 hours. Therapy, hands down, has changed my life, has changed Valerie's life. It's greater than the sum of its parts. You think it's just talking to a professional or talking to another human. For some reason, the way human beings are built, it helps way, way more than you think it's going to. That is absolutely true and has changed the trajectory of my life in a huge and wonderful way. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online and the service is available 
available for clients worldwide. You can log in from your account anytime, anywhere, and send a message to your therapist. You can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, or uh, so you won't have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to, to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. That could be awkward in real life. It's much better to do it this way. It's more affordable than traditional therapy as well. Offline therapy is more costly and financial aid is even available. BetterHelp is a great way to show up for yourself and invest in your well-being because, well, you deserve some inner peace. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Go to betterhelp.com slash reviews. Visit betterhelp.com slash weirdo. That's better H-E-L-P. And join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. So a special offer for weirdos, get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash weirdo. Thank you to BetterHelp for supporting this show. This ad is also brought to us by our friends at ExpressVPN. Let me ask you something. What if there was someone out there who kept a log of every single thing you did every minute of the day? That would be pretty creepy, right? Well, what if I told you that's exactly what happens every time you go online? Ah! <laughs> Your internet provider is allowed to store logs of every website you've ever visited and can legally sell this data to anyone. That's why I always use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your internet provider can't see or log what you do online. Many of you may be wondering, well, if I'm routing my data through a VPN, doesn't that just mean the VPN can see what I'm doing and log my data instead? You might be right to think that. Many VPNs claim to have a no logs policy, but they've been caught logging customer activity. Guess what? ExpressVPN is the only VPN I trust because they use trusted server technology. They were the first major VPN provider to engineer all of their VPN servers to run in RAM. That means it's impossible for their VPN servers to store any data, in, in a data including logs of any ExpressVPN customer. And if you don't take my or ExpressVPN's word for it, ExpressVPN is so confident in their no logs claim, they even had one of the biggest assurance firms, Price Waterhouse Coopers, audit their technology. It's no wonder that The Verge named ExpressVPN the number one VPN in the world. So stop letting people keep logs of what you do online. Visit expressvpn.com slash weirdo right now to find out how you can get three months free. That's E X P R E S S V P N dot com slash weirdo. W E I R D O. ExpressVPN dot com slash weirdo to learn more. All right, back at it. And we're back. Okay. <laughs> I go to, we go away again. Mm. Sal, this, this, was a, this was a huge moment. Sal and I are in the house. We're in the. We went. We rented a beach house. Not not on the beach, but a house at the shore. I mean, uh, and we're we and, and there was a pool in the backyard, which plays into it. We're in the house. We're cooking breakfast. Uh, I can't wait for what the first topic was. A, Someone eats a cheese. It. He he goes to make a bagel and makes a remark. About the bagel selection. First of all, bagel. I know it's one of those words. I say, I'm getting creamed. We did we did taste buds with the RU garbage guys this week, and they picked. They fought for bagel bites, and they made fun of me the way I said bagel the whole time. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm not even making fun. I'm just noting that that's how they say it in Minnesota. Yeah. Well, am I Mario? Bagel. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Mario. Bagel. Uh, am I from Minnesota? <laughs> I'm a bag of candy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Getting toasty, huh? Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, so um, we're we, we because I had bought cinnamon raisin and plain, and he's like, "Why are there no everything bagels? Why would you not?" And I go, 
who the fuck wants an everything bagel? And we start arguing. He's like, it's the, what are you talking about? It's the best bagel. I was like, no, it's not. Cinnamon raisins. But, and we started I arguing. I'm with Sal on this one. We started arguing, and pe- the other people in the house were, like, jumping in, whatever. And Sal goes, this is like when we fought about the cookies on the Joker's cruise. Because Impractical Jokers does a cruise, and on that cruise, we fought about Chips Ahoy and Oreos. And I go, oh, yeah, this is. Which side did you take on that? Chips Ahoy. I hate Oreos. Um, So. (laughs) I don't think we can let that slide. I I don't like Oreos. Go ahead, take the jacket off. I should have told you. Now we go to the mid-roll. Go to play the mid-roll ads again. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm just kidding. So. I'm going to need more on that Oreo subject, but yeah, keep well, going. Well, there's a whole episode of Taste Buds about it. <laughs> I, can't be, I can't be jumping to another podcast. I'm already listening to this one. <laughs> so anyway, so, so we're arguing, screaming, screaming about bagels. So one of my favorite things about you is you'll get real yeah. worked up about some and basic shit. In the middle of it, he goes, is this a podcast? And I was like... Yes, I think it is. You look down and Squarespace is already there. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, I look down. They've got, yeah. Dollar Qu- Shave Club. What's the fuck? Yeah. I was trying to remember the name of the electric toothbrush that everybody advertised. Quib? Quibs? Oh, yeah. Quibby? Whatever the fuck. Quip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Six CBD companies. <laughs> Yeah. And a gambling app. I think <laughs> I, I, I feel like I was one of the early adopters to CBD. Keep going. Um, so anyway, so I go, yeah, it is. And, and he goes, what, what would we call it? And we sat for an hour in the living room. It's 1030 in the morning. So from 930 to 1030, we sit in the living room <laughs> trying to figure out what we would call it. By the kitchen clock? Yeah, you know, the kitchen clock. And then he looks at me and he goes, shouldn't we just be thinking about this with a nice cold beer in the pool right now? And I go, and like I lit up so much of the idea. And he started laughing at how excited it made me. And he crossed to me and hugged me. And while he had me in his embrace, he said, don't you dare ever move to L.A. ever again. And we went to the pool. Oh, my God. And had the best day. New homes, better homes. <laughs> and at 4 p.m., I exclaimed, taste buds. <laughs> oh, my God. I always wonder, is there an earbuds? Is there like a music, music file? There's got to be. Got to be an earbud. There's right? got to be, right? Earbuds. If there's not, let's do it. Do I, it. It's not for me. I'd just be. I'm like, saying if it's not, you, I would copyright it if I were you. And oh, okay. And sell, sell it to it. the poor sap that <laughs> does want to do it. Five percent of your quib ads. I, <laughs> so anyway, and did you do a little jig of celebration? You can just point that at Joe. We can stop the oscillator. No, no, no you don't have to. Point it. I don't want to be a sweaty Egyptian. <laughs> that was very fast. Um, <laughs> But but it was so so the, the 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 importance of that part of the story is is it's a beautiful story. It's beautiful and it's it's the deepening of the friendship. But it's also now I have this podcast, and the podcast very luckily takes off. Mm. So now it's like I really want to I want to argue orgios with you. We we will. <laughs> we will. By the way, and then that, and me and Patty are still doing our podcast with the movies, and and that was doing okay. It was doing pretty well, but then Taste Buds popping made "We'll See You in Hell" pop more. Mm. So now all of a sudden, I'm like, "Holy shit, man!" Like, really, it didn't split your audience. It actually grew both of them. It grew, We'll See You in Hell jumped significantly from Taste Buds. Wow. Why? Did you talk about See You in Hell on I that? I would plug it all the time. And I'd say, if you don't get enough of me complaining here about food, you can hear me complain about movies on this other show. Wow. With another nice man who puts up with it named Pat Walsh. Who kind of has Sal vibes. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. So, so they don't immediately take off. It takes time, but they, they, and by the way, when I say taste buds, take, we, we started recording taste buds months after creating it there. And then we didn't launch it until months. So my point is, is by the time 
all the 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 help money is running out money is actually starting to come back into my life again I'm, wow. I'm actually have a I have a career again yeah. where something is making money wow. amidst all of this happening yes uh I'm with Paul Italia who owns the Stan Comedy Club and is one of my best friends in the world we're sitting on... Sounds like an alias. <laughs> it does, doesn't I'm, it? I'm uh, Jim Sicily. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, Sicilia. <laughs> We're sitting on his roof. We're looking at all of the stores that are closed in New York. Uh, and he says, everybody is jumping ship, but it's the people that stay that'll survive. So if you ever had a thing you wanted to do, now's the time. And very passively, I go... I just wanted to open a sandwich shop. And he goes, <laughs> yeah, he comes over to me, he hugs me and goes, don't you ever move to LA again. Holmes. He goes, what are your sandwich ideas? I tell them to him. He goes, we're going to do it as a pop-up at the stand. Whoa. And we start in the middle of- You had five minutes on sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> you did your sandwich set and he passed you? <laughs> Basically. All right, provolone. Basically. <laughs> Underused cheese. Yeah. <laughs> So that's that's what was the sandwich? What was the sandwich that like made you different? Because it was a concept. It was an idea. Speaking of it as an idea, <laughs> we're destroying Seinfeld. Tell me, <laughs> <laughs> I hope someone forwards this to him. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> He'll probably yell at us. <laughs> I know, uh, boy. I've had speaking of Glenn Gary, I've had Seinfeld on the hook to do this podcast for four years now. How great would that be? It would be the best. That would be the best. So tell me, I, I do mean it though, I'm curious, what is the Joey Rose's sandwich that you think made you worthy, because it's doing well, and it, I know it where was, the story it goes. Was bec what, what excited Paul was the concept of it, which was, I was like, it's eight sandwiches, they're $8 a piece. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to give people... 10 times better a sandwich they can get at Subway and we're going to beat Subway's price. It's literally, and I said this on Ryan Sickler's show yesterday, it's American Gangster. It's when Denzel goes, I'm going to go right to the source yeah. and get the heroin myself can I and sell it for half the price. Yeah, I actually love that movie. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. No one talks about that movie. Yeah. it's the They came after my wife. Yeah. Uh, my favorite part is when he goes, he goes, he go, when he goes, he goes, you don't scrub that, you pat that. When he's mad about his rug, that's a $20,000 carpet. <laughs> I, I, part, I've seen that just, movie. Somebody spilled something on his rug. <laughs> I've seen it so many times, couldn't tell you that part. It's so, it kills me. You pat that. Oh he's so my mad. Oh, God. Anyway, um, so I tell Paul this idea, and he's like, I think that idea is great. And he was like, so, and then when I told him the sandwich ideas, I was like, these are like things, these are variations of sandwiches I grew up with. Like, and you can't get these in New York. Why the fuck can't you get an Italian sub in New York? And when you do, it's $17 and it sucks. Mm. Why am I going to a corner bodega to get an Italian hoagie in New York? This is crazy, man. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, you know, like that was it. That was it. We always teased you about hoagies. I know. And then you went into hoagies. I went into the hoagie business. It's like when people it, like, when people tell you who they are, you should listen to them. But when your friends tell you who you are, <laughs> you should listen. And we kept going, you're a hoagie guy. Holmes, it's literally you love hoagies. when the guy goes, remember when my teacher said that you couldn't make a living being funny? It's yes, that. Yes. Except with hoagies. Except everybody was like, have you noticed Joe's? Always two fist and hoagie. <laughs> this guy's got a lot of hoags. Yeah, you never you never beat down the hoagie dream. By the way, I'm not just doing this to to you know lean into your interests. I'm legit invested in that premise. Why do sandwiches suck? Why do they suck, Joe? Because they're and, not made properly. And when I went when I was growing up, I know we're two old men. But when I was growing up, you could go to a number of places in the little downtown area mm -hmm. in Lexington where I grew up, go in and get like a fucking rocking sandwich, mm -hmm. like a great sandwich. Mm -hmm. And then it all got turned into, well, Subway had a big part, of, was a big part of the problem. Quiznos, well, don't we deserve better than Quiznos? Don't I, we? I mean, I only... <clears throat> Just because you heat it up. I don't recognize Blimpy or uh, Quiznos. I just don't even consider them. I recognize Subway because they're there. 
Yes. You can't ignore it. Yes. They suck. Yes. And their spokesperson had sex with or tried to have sex. He did something real bad with kids. Yeah, it was bad. (laughs) Anyway. It was... The worst. We have a T-shirt. We we have a Joey Rose's T-shirt. We're about to launch our merch, and it just says, "Our spokesperson isn't in prison." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Do you think Subway has ever brought you up in a meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they've ever been like, "Guys, I've been warning you about this hard eight," <laughs> and they're like, "Get out of here! Are it's a one-off." Wrecked. Yeah, Kids maybe. a problem. Maybe. The, um, no, so, just... so we start doing the pop-up. We spend, I'm not kidding, two months perfecting the bread recipe. We bake the bread every morning. Wow. We spent two months perfecting the bread recipe. Well, it took you four hours to come up with taste buds. I'm not surprised <laughs> it took you a few, a few weeks to come up with the bread. But it's perfect. It's perfect bread. It's perfect bread? I think so. What do you, it's a, it's a hoagie roll. It is, but there are. This is why you ask the question: yeah, Why no, do I'm sandwiches interested. suck? Yeah, and the bread. The bread is your is that's your foundation. It's like ninety percent bread. If your bread sucks, yeah. And when I say sucks, I don't just mean the texture and taste. I mean if there's too much of it. Yep. Holmes, I'm telling you, we went through like trial periods before we launched the pop up, where we were like, how much meat is too much? How much is too little? Wow. How how long should the roll be? Wow. How wide should it be? How do we make it work? How do we make it a value for $8, but also we still make some kind of profit? Yeah. But but the person doesn't feel cheated, you know? Like it was yeah. it was a lot, dude. It was a lot, but we figured it out and we launched the pop-up. What surprised you? Because I mean, was, I, I like know. watching shows about small businesses and stuff. I think people do. So you had this dream. Where maybe you can't answer this. I don't. I don't want to fuck with your business. But like, at some point, there had to be something where you're like, and it's gotta be honey baked ham. Fake example. Every and single someone goes, thing. And someone goes, Joe. The reason why no one uses honey baked ham is because honey is actually a sweetener that's imported, and like your overhead, like it's you're not going to make any profit. Like at some point, you had to see make some concession. No, you didn't. There was no concession. So the way we solved that problem, we had it. We did that did come up. Yeah, we have a sandwich that's that's Asiago cheese, Genoa salami, prosciutto, and uh, sweet peppers. The problem with that sandwich was if you want to use prosciutto, you have you have to use good prosciutto. Bad prosciutto is a nightmare. It's, yeah, it's disgusting. And Paul was like, dude, this is not cheap shit. You know, like, this is, right. you know. You, you know so I, you yeah. figure out, okay, how do you make up for that cost in over here in another item? You know what I mean? Uh, now you're Xbox losing money on the system right. but making it on the games. So we have a peanut butter and jelly with Ruffles, not Ruffles brand, but a Ruffled potato chips on it. Yeah. On the sandwich? Yeah. That sandwich has a very... Low, low cost. Uh, um, yeah, you know, pro- what, 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 you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you, it evens itself out. It evens itself That's out. That's interesting. The people eating the PB and J's are helping pay for Papa Prosciutto over here, yeah. living large. And by the way, don't think that you're getting skimped on the PB and J. It is a monstrous sandwich, and you will be just as full and just as happy. And it's an eight dollar PB and J, uh, buddy. I'm going PBJ every day. Yeah. Even good prosciutto, I'm like, what is this? Freddy Krueger's nuts. <laughs> Get this shit. It's, even when I ate meat, prosciutto is one of the most... Oh, I know you're going to fight me on this. It just tastes like... I don't know. I don't even want to say what It's an extremely like. salty ham. I mean, well, it's, it's very salty, but also just the texture reminds me of biting the corner off my finger. Uh, it's like human. It's a little too human I would say that me. you... Well, yeah. It's often cut too thick. Okay. And that's a problem. <laughs> is, I love Joey sandwiches. These are all the little things. Yeah. It's like it's and like. And did you like it? Does that make you come alive when you're doing this? So when we first started doing it, I was making the sandwiches. Yeah. At the pop up, I had nothing else to do. Yep. You know, we we. This might have been pre taste buds recordings. I don't remember, but Pat and I would just record on Zoom. Yeah. And then um, and then 
So you're saying in the future, hard eight restaurants are going to have black and white photos of you actually making the sandwiches I, like emblazoned on the wall. It, it's it, possible. There, I don't think so, but they're available. <laughs> They exist. Joey, uh, I'm calling it now. It's happening. Oh, that's funny. Um, no, but uh, I was I was doing it because I was like, if he's going to give me a chance to like do this under his roof and use his staff, yeah, so we can see if it works, I got to be all in. And you rose to it. Yeah, and I, I I also had to show the guys how to do it. Like I made I made like guides and. And are you enjoying this or is this a drag? No, I was. Yeah. I was. It seemed like you were. And comics were coming in and, and fans and yeah. fans were always like, I didn't think you'd be here. You know, uh -huh. like, yeah, yeah, I'm here, man. I want to make sure it's good. And then Keith's in the corner. Of course he's here, stupid. Well, Keith, actually, it's so funny. Keith was like, God, God damn it, it's great. I hate how, I hate that I like it. Like That's a merch shirt. Yeah, I, hate I know. That I he like was, it. it was very funny. He was screaming at me. I uh, Can I say something that you probably won't care as much as I want you to care? Sure. Like, I want this to be really sweet, but I don't think you're going to care, but I want you to... The subtitles on are like, I love you. Sure. Uh, I'm going to go, and I'm going to eat a turkey sandwich. I know I don't eat meat, but... That's I, huge. It's my favorite sub is turkey, and I want the Joey Roses. That's huge. Turkey. That's huge. Tell me a little about it. It's turkey with roast beef. Okay, well... I'm but we home make the roast beef, <laughs> and homes, I'm telling you... You might want to have the roast beef. Oh, it. it's, it's been decades since I've had. But if, but if you really want it with just turkey, we can take the roast beef. Off. All right. Um, it's got hot cherry peppers on it. Okay. The best peppers. It's got white American cheese, some mayo, salt, pepper, tomato, onion. It sounds great. It's When awesome. Val was pregnant, she also doesn't eat meat. She didn't have a turkey sub. It was the only thing she wanted. It's a very specific food. It's, it's a very crazy food. A turkey food. sub seasoned right is awesome. It's unbelievable. Um so fans coming in fans are coming in comics are coming in. so funny cypher sounds uh, came in <laughs> he didn't know i was doing it he just came into the stand for a meeting and he saw me behind the counter and he was like is everything all right man because he thought i just got a job at the stand <laughs> <laughs> and i go no 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 i go i have a sandwich pop up here i'm doing a sandwich business and he goes oh that's fucking dope man and i was like yeah it's kind of cool like so anyway so during that period, Paul was like, you know, man, like, we should talk about a brick and mortar. People are reacting strongly to this. And we started talking about it. And then Paul was like, you know, we both like the old school bars. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, it should be a bar, too. It's going to be a lot easier to keep the lights on if it's both. Mm. And then we were like, well, let's make it a place you'd want to hang out in. Let's make the best bar we can think of that would be like our favorite bar and what's that well first we picked the location which was the lower east side which is sort of the last bastion of of manhattan of true manhattan old school manhattan and then because of the lower east side we started to be like what do we want this to be and we were like we want it to be like all the social clubs in the movies we love so much and then that expanded into the idea of we want this place to feel like a cross-section of all the best decades. Time flies when you're talking about Roses. What time is it? Roses. It's the 90-minute line. It's 2.20. Oh, okay, cool. We, we want it to be a cross-section of all the greatest decades of New York. So we were like, what's the, what is that? And we were like, it's the 70s and the early 80s. Mm. And Holmes, you want to talk universe. Our address is uh, Rivington Street. I can't believe I'm blanking on our address. It's on Rivington Street. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we we hired an artist to help us with the design, and we hired two different artists. And I think Joe, I had I'm pretty sure we had a meeting for homeowners insurance, and I'm pretty sure the company is called Rivington Partners. Really? <laughs> that today. That's weird. That's universe. That's universe. We when we say universe, Joe and I always have these weird synchronicities, like super blatant. Like that's that weird. One. That's a good one. That's really weird. I mean, today I had a meeting with Rivington Partners. I, I, I'm sure of it. That's really weird. And you're like, it's Rivington. Weird. Well, but also the fact that Rivington is so significant to what I'm about to tell you too, because that's it, Rivington is another universe thing. Weird. 
we're on Rivington Street. We have an artist come in to help us with putting the design together. Uh, and we said, I'm, I kept explaining this concept. And I said, it's Paul's Boutique. And she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, the Beastie Boys album, Paul's Boutique. It's every cool thing about New York. Like, it's like, it's disco, and it's Studio 54, and it's punk rock, and it's hip hop. And I was like, it's fucking Paul's Boutique. And she's like, okay, I got you. I think I got what you mean. And I find she's out. like, oh, God, I'm going to have to get a license to ill before we do this. <laughs> It's going to take six months to get the license to ill before I can, before I can break ground on this. <laughs> oh, got to call Ma Bell. <laughs> Shit. Dude, <laughs> I find out a month later, the front cover of Paul's Boutique was taken on Rivington Street Three blocks from our bar. What? Because that's where Paul's boutique was. Oh my shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then I'm like, of course it was. There's a fucking Beastie Boys mural there. And I never knew why it was there. Wow. I thought it was just like a cool mural. Whoa. So then, like, once that all clicked, then it was like, so you, yes, the bar you wanted to be, right? Paul was like, he got a screenshot of James Conn's bar in the movie Thief, and he was like, we're going to make our sign look like this. And if you look at the sign in the movie Thief and you look at our bar sign, it's the same sign. Wow. And it, when we, the night it lit up, I literally teared up. I t it's, oh, fuck, it's going to get me. God, I don't want to cry. I texted Paul a picture of the sign because he couldn't be there when we turned it on. And he just wrote back, we did it, with a picture of the Thief sign. It was fucking awesome. Rose, it was this awesome. story is... I just love it. I'm loving this <laughs> chat. I'm sorry to interrupt just to tell no. you how great it is. It's a great, it's a story of isolation to community. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. It's from head to heart. It's from and all these unexpected things you never would have dreamed moving you. What I kept saying when I moved back was my biggest problem that I had with the with the lifestyle of LA. And I don't mean to knock it. I'm not knocking it. Please. But it's it's suburbia, essentially. Yeah, sure. And I said, the ultimate goal is isolation. It's to get the house on the highest hill with the fence that has- You want to hear my bit about the it? The I-code. Yes. You want to hear my bit about Go it? Go ahead, please. You're, I think you're going to love it. So America makes up for like 4 or 5% of the world's population. It might be like 4. It might right. be lower now. This is an old statistic. But we use 50% of the resources of the world, which is fucking insane. Right. We could both write an hour just on that. Right. I think about like in Pee Wee, we're, we're Herman. Right. You know what I mean? Where they yeah. get a yeah, wearing the three-piece <laughs> suit at the high school, has like homemade pudding at lunch, and is like, nah. And lets other kids smell his seat or something. He's like, you should be lucky. You got to smell Herman's seat. <laughs> but here's where it becomes a bit, or an observation at least. But then Americans, it's like America is our, our parents. Yes. And the way they are in the world trains us how to be in the country. So America hoards mm -hmm. and then isolates. Right. Like, doesn't want to share. I know right. we share. I'm just saying doesn't share that much. Same with the Americans. Our goal, like you're saying, is to make tons and tons of money and then move away from everybody. Right. So you become a tiny little America using, you make up, 4% of the country and you're using 50% of, or your community, you right. make up a tiny sliver of it, but you want to hoard just like we right. learn to hoard from our parents. Right. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. So that's, that's, and that is very <laughs> evident in LA. Make it and then break. And then, I, yeah. And I would always say the only people you ever see are the curated group you allow in past your wall. Yeah, that's right. It's the Tony, I, I struggle with this too. It's the Tony Stark thing. Uh, I've, I've said this a million times on this podcast, but Dr. Strange says to Tony Stark, and it's a deep burn. He goes, unlike you, I have friends that don't work for me. And yeah. I was like, yikes. Yeah, that hurt. that's, that's, a, that's yeah. a hard one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what you said earlier, full circle. What, what, which, what? which one of these guys actually has friends? That's right. Yeah. That's, what, that's why yeah. I, I'm interested in yeah. that. Yeah. So, and that's why I value you so much yeah. as a friend. Yeah. yeah. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. So, so I said that uh, that was L.A., right? But I said what I liked about New York was it was about integration. Mm. 
you can't live in New York without a goal of yours being complete integration. It has to be. Mm. I was like, you, you could be Donald Trump living on the top floor of Trump Tower. You still have to go down the elevator mm. through the lobby mm -hmm. and you're getting your newspaper at the same fucking stand I buy my front. Mm -hmm. You're going to the same coffee shop. And you're the guy in the, in the cabbie's cap being yeah. like, hey, Mr. T, <laughs> you see yeah. the headlines yeah. tonight? And yeah. like, oh. I'm, I'm every John Mulaney voice. Yeah. Hello, <laughs> Donald. So, uh... And, and that's what I like about New York. Yeah, I know what you mean. So, so it goes from a story of complete isolation to, to truly a story about integration and connection, not just because it's New York and not just because it's with friends and doing a new thing, but also, Holmes, because during the pandemic, the idea, the original idea of the, the sandwiches that are affordable but great, it grew into this whole other thing. Because we were watching the city collapse, mm. and we were we were sitting there going, "Fuck you and your twenty two dollar craft cocktail." We're sick of it. Mm. I we want to open a place where you can come and sit for hours and spend forty bucks mm. and eat and drink. Mm. Come get drunk for twenty bucks. You know what I mean? Like, and that everything. That it that was the indicator of every single decision made in the bar. The and then we started putting ourselves into it. The entire wall behind the bar is, is our video vintage video discs that Paul found at a thrift store in Detroit, of all the movies we love and classic. You mean laser disc? There's a there was a there was a laser disc competitor that was called a video disc, and this oh. is that. Wow. Um, but it comes in a plastic. The disc itself is in a case with the artwork on it, and you would put the whole thing into the machine. Wow. So you can buy one of these, and it's like a, a mini disc. Yeah, it's Remember a piece of wall art. Wow. So it's it's it, so all these movies that we love are behind the bar. The entire bar top is um, um, what's wood. That? <laughs> no, no, well, that's what's funny. It was supposed to be. <laughs> it's a forty-five minute. Yeah, thing. yeah, it would. <laughs> With Simpsons, we come back, it's dark out. Yeah. I'm not even hearing you go, wood. <laughs> <laughs> the bar was wood. <laughs> That's a great Simpsons joke. Oh, they do it a lot. That's perfect. Um, it's, um, oh, for Christ's sake, I'm blanking on the term when you put the clear stuff down and it hardens. It's like a resin. Epoxy, epoxy yeah. So we did an epoxy bar top. The entire bar top is a collage of of classic New York hip hop flyers and posters, wow. some of which came from my childhood bedroom. Wow. We so they made, have jizz on them? Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we made the. This one we didn't have to epoxy. <laughs> it just stuck right on there because it came from Joe DeRosa's childhood bedroom. Can I start <laughs> you with some Asiago sandwiches? <laughs> you know what? We're good. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> I feel uh, like the roasting level has been just right. It's good. It's, it's not heavy. You're coming in with, with jokes when we need them. Yeah, Otherwise, right, it's yeah. just a heavy story. <laughs> no, I love the story. Uh, I'm really... I'm, no, I'm saying you're peppering it. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. A banana pepper? A banana pepper. Or cherry pepper. Hot cherry pepper. Hot cherry pepper. We Dude. made the back room look like an old like steakhouse. Like, you know, like... The bathrooms look sort of Studio 54-ish. They've got mirrored ce ceilings and gold leaf walls. Like, wow. we just took... It's a new way to check out your neighbor's deck. Yeah. Well, it's a one man at a time. <laughs> oh, okay. <Yeah. laughs> uh, it's, it's the most Coke-looking bathroom of all time that only yes. one guy can go into. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's every single piece of it. It's funny. Some people have visited the bar and go, this sort of feels like your apartment. Because oh, it does sound like your apartment. A little bit, right? Like my Star Wars arcade machine is in the bar. Wow. You know, like like that's great. So anyway, so you're really putting yourself into it. Like there's vulnerability here, the kind of vulnerability that requires friends. Yeah. yeah. Not to mention that my face is on the logo, really? which is uh, very uncomfortable. Wow. But um, and I did not want that, but Paul wanted it. I'm saying that because I don't want to sound like an asshole, and I was like, yeah, yeah, put yeah. my face on it. Put my face on the yeah. sandwich um, board. Put, uh, put me on the put sandwich me on board. The, ca <laughs> the Cadillac board. The, uh, 
And then get the chalk. You get the chalk. Asiago. <laughs> and you draw yourself. I mean, we said we wouldn't go near it, but I A B C Asiago. <laughs> Bread cheese. <laughs> A-I-D-A. <laughs> no, forget it. Uh, it's too hot to riff what A-I-D-A means. So, and then we open the doors, and then fucking Omicron hits. Oh, yeah. And it's just like, son of a bitch. Uh, uh, but it's been amazing. The, the influx and support that we got initially, strictly from the comedy community initially, and then the neighborhood started to come in. And then, and it's like, you know, Big J was telling me, and this is really touching. He was like, he's like, dude, you're like a fucking comedy stop. Like, he's like, people fly in because they want to see this show and they want to see Legion of Skanks live. And he was like, they always go. We First stop was Joy Rose's sandwich. You know, like, wow. it's fucking wild. Like, like people, part of the tour. Yeah, people were in the other day. And they were like, oh my God, like... <laughs> You're here. This is cool. You know, it's just always really sweet. <laughs> you just wake up under newspapers. I have nowhere <laughs> else to go. Of course I'm here. Uh, it's all, <laughs> you just go back and the pigeon dreaming. lands on your head. <laughs> am, am I dreaming it? Is you mean? That's what no, I thought you meant. No. That's funny. I just remember no, you were sleeping in the shop. I wake up and I'm, I'm, I'm homeless under newspapers. I think that's really funny. That's I've an angle. The whole thing. It's a little more Twilight Zone. I dr this is the dream. Yeah, I'm here talking yeah, about yeah, it. I yeah, wake yeah. up. Uh, <laughs> none of it has happened. But they were like, dude, we drove down 90 minutes from Connecticut. Like, people drove in from Ohio. Wow. Like, it's wild. Wow. It's fucking wild. And I'm always like, please tell me you're doing something else while you're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes they are, and they're sometimes like, they're not. So there's like, no, fuck it, man. We just wanted to check it out. <laughs> Uh, we yeah. also want to try Big J's hot sauces, but uh, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I understand Luis Gomez does relish, uh, and then, then we're driving back to the Buckeye State. <laughs> it's so funny. I keep talking to Tom Papa about this, but he makes bread all the time, and I'm like, let's do a thing with your bread. Do a Papa store. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Papa's. Papa's tapas. Papa's, Papa's tapas. tapas. That's where you should do that. Papa's tapas, and then the the like the log line is we didn't just do it because it rhymes. <laughs> I actually there's like all this text. I actually love tapas. <laughs> the um, um, but this we got through. Thing, the, we got the through Omicron. Thing. What was the big J thing? The it was just that it was just tour stop. Oh, yeah. but we got through Omicron. It's been incredible. Uh, the most flattering thing that happens is sometimes uh, a very old person, and I shouldn't say very old person, you know what I mean, a, a legit old person will come in and and say, like, I haven't seen a place like this in years in this neighborhood. Like, it's, I'm like, holy shit, man, we fucking did it. Like, yeah. everybody's like, how long have you been open? And we're like, since November. They're like, what? <laughs> this looks like it's been here for, like, forever. Wow. Um it all just came together. So here we are. End of the story. Joey Roses is up and running and flourishing and being enjoyed. Well, he's not running. <laughs> <laughs> Taste Buds is like going strong. We'll see you in hell is going strong. I'm back out on the road for the first time, really, since all of it. Mm. Ticket sales are way up because of these other things. Mm, that's great. Like this, it's it was a whole reestablishing and rebirth into a career that when I left this city, I thought might be done. Wow. Like, you know. So good, Joe. Wild. I love, do you know that, speaking of Keaton. I can't, that was a, that story was at least an hour long. That's wild. Oh, yeah. Like when you asked that, I was like. I was thinking this will take me about 15 minutes. <laughs> I love uh, the movie The Founder. Have you love seen it. The Founder? Yeah. Yeah, I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah. It's about McDonald's. I, yeah, I steal, I steal Paul. I steal everything out from under Paul. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's what, no, a third guy would come and steal everything. And, be, and oh, then yes. at the end he'd go, you know why I stole it? The name, Hard Eight. <laughs> Just sounds like America to me. 
It's funny. I watched that movie when we were building the bar, which opening that type of business in New York City, I'm sure it, I can't, I can only speak to it, those specifics, because that's what I experienced. It was the most stressful thing I have ever done, ever, hmm. ever. I mean, waking up night after night, like at 5 a.m., like literally like waking up like, who do you think you are? What, are you fucking crazy? Yeah, cold cuts, cold sweats. It's yeah. <laughs> the old adage. You go into cold cuts. You've got some problems coming your way. Like nuts, man. Yeah. You know, it's no, terrifying, I, what but, was, but exhilarating. The reason I brought up the founder was for the past hour, I've been listening to this story and I've been like legit enthralled. I do love you. I'm sort of, you know what I mean? Like I'm more interested than most, but I'm also like, this is like a great story. That's why the, you Thanks. getting kicked in the nuts at the beginning part was so essential. The Zoom with your mom. Right. I'm coming up, but I can't. Right. Big J coming in in a corn t shirt <laughs> and rescuing With you. Eating corn. <laughs> he also eating corn. Beef. <laughs> corn beef. It's not going to be a vegetable. The only vegetable Big J eats <laughs> is corn. Beef. <laughs> Um, Joe, I realize I have a gift for you. This is no shit. It's on the desk. Katie, you see that? This is going to sound silly. You see that napkin? I got this for you. No shit. And I just realized I was going to mail it to you. Whoa. I only got, I got it for you. What was it from? Like the premiere of the Carlin thing? The premiere of the Carlin thing. And yes, a drink was put on it. Not me. I was mad when someone did that. But it's just the seven Thank words you. you can't say. I'm and I got use it, it for as you. my bookmark for my book. Boom. Yeah. That's about right. <laughs> That's what I wanted you to say. Well, it's. <laughs> Listen, it's it's a lovely gift. It's a dirty napkin. It's a little gross. No, I know. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. That's no. I mean it. That's about right. Put it in the no. put it in the Cadillac book. <laughs> so Joey, we're almost out of time. I also don't want to lose it. No, no, no. You're a beautiful man. Uh, we're almost out of time. It's so. This really is the sleepy summer series. I forgot that this happened. It only happens every year for the past ten years. <laughs> That every every summer we don't have AC in the studio, so we just kind of like have these like lower Why don't and you slower. You put AC in the studio. Well, we have it. It's right there, but it's too loud. You have it. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was so good. That was so good. <laughs> you have it. That was that, that was one of my favorite. <laughs> you looked at me with pure incredulity. Just. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it on. That's the it's Jackie Brown. It's it's Jackie Brown. It's Jackie Brown. It's not it's Jackie Brown. It's the line. It's Jackie Brown in Jackie when Brown. When he goes, when Sam Jackson goes, you mean to tell me you saw the bail bonds in the store and you thought nothing of it? <laughs> What's in here when he kills the hero? And he goes, wow. and it's Paul quotes it to me all the time when he's breaking my balls. He always goes, you used to be beautiful, man. Because that's what he says as De Niro's dying. Wow. He goes, you used to be beautiful, man, because he can't believe the fuck up. Wow. And you didn't think any, that, that, that was it. You just yeah, told yeah. me you saw Max Cherry in the department store, played by Robert Forrester. Wow. <laughs> Someone's getting all these references, but it's not me. And I'm... Did you never see Jackie Brown? I've seen it, but not as much as I've seen. I've seen almost every Tarantino movie many, many times. Do Except, yourself a favor, revisit. Yeah, it's it's one that you got to see a couple times yeah. to really love it. Yeah, it's way funnier than you remember it being. You have to watch Jackie Brown without Pulp Fiction on your mind. I see. Pulp Fiction had come out. We all thought it was going to be another Pulp Fiction. It's not. It's a different movie. Yeah. And you have to now go back and watch it knowing Fresh. like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and all that stuff. Yeah. And you'll be like, this movie is, is I'm not saying it wasn't amazing when it came out, but it, 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 you'll we really ready. love it. Yeah. We, we wanted more. Yeah. You're like, wedding. why is it being told linearly? Linearly. <laughs> linearly yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the word. Here's yeah. the, you know, it's silly to, because I thought we would actually talk about this for the majority of the podcast, but here we are and you have a, another show to get to. But you, tell, tell the story. You, why did you, you called me recently. Are you comfortable telling the yeah. story? 
Is that something we can talk about? <laughs> I talked about it yesterday on Sibley. Okay. Yeah. All right, then. Go Did I ahead. say Segura earlier? I don't Honey think do. so. Not Honey. Sibley. Uh, oh, you said Sickler. You said Sickler. God damn, a lot of S's. Who did you do, Sibley? No, I did Honeydew. Sickler. I did Sickler. Yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday. I love Sickler. I was eating fruit salad before we went into the studio, and there was honeydew in it, and without even realizing, I'm about to do a show called Honeydew, I put it on my fork, and I went, I started walking away, and he goes, what, what, are, you, what are you about to do, man? What are you about to do? And I go, I'm throwing away this fucking honeydew. He started laughing so hard. And he's like, let me tape it, let me tape it. Oh, because you don't like honeydew? I was like, it's a shit fruit. It's worthless. Look at it. It looks like it's going to be bursting with lime and flavor. It's I don't all... think you've had a proper honeydew. Fuck off. I've had it plenty of times. <laughs> this is like when, this is, this. there are three things people do this with, and I've had it. Number one, cantaloupe and honeydew. Uh huh. Number two, weed. <laughs> Number three, vegan cheese. <laughs> Anytime you go, I hate one of those things. So he goes, I don't think you've had the proper. I've had all of them, and they all suck. <laughs> every weed, every vegan cheese, and every melon. <laughs> I want to say. I thought cantaloupe was honeydew. Is honeydew the the like white one? Honeydew is the greenish white one. Yeah, that one sucks. Yeah, you're correct. Because you think it's gonna taste. Yeah, you think limey it's gonna burst. Yeah, you <laughs> think it's gonna be limey and refreshing. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, but I do like cantaloupe. You into cantaloupe? I hate cantaloupe. This guy with the with the fruits. No, I'm serious. Those Why my... did you get a fruit salad if you don't like? Now it's just because there was buds. only two pieces of honeydew in it. What, what, it was what, mostly pineapple, which I love. I love. You a... have the palate yeah. of a child. <laughs> pineapple say. is like it's like a gateway fruit. It's like, come on, I know you've been having sour patch kids, <laughs> but we got a party over here too. Look at my fun spiky hair. I'm. <laughs> I'm like Guy Fieri. I was just gonna say that. Slice into me. The Guy Fieri of fruits. It's like the most undeniable bright fruit. Bright yellow and skin. I'm bright, yeah. And, it's <laughs> and when you eat it, it tastes like sugar candy. But I, then you can't make the leap to honeydew. Buddy, I gotta tell honeydew you, honeydew is like you know your in-laws. You marry pineapple, but you gotta have cantaloupe. No, no. You gotta. Exactly. It's like the in-law dinner you don't want to have but to go to. <laughs> You're obligated. And you got to, it, yes, but it should not be an obligation. It should be a joyous experience. I hate the melon. I hate watermelon. I hate pineapple. You I, hate honeydew and, uh, watermelon? Carol. I hate it. Here we go. Let me guess. I haven't Wa had the right one, right? Watermelon. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. Water. I hate it. I hate it. Why? I'm going to wager a guess because your body is so brittle and malnourished that the water content of it makes bowels start moving and gurgling <laughs> and you and you have to like it's, you can't handle it. It's a fair guess. <laughs> you But you answered your question with your mockery of me. Yes. It's water. It's delicious water. It's, I'll, I'll I'll go eat a fucking ice cube. <laughs> And guess what? I won't have to deal with seeds. <laughs> oh, my God. Have I just written a new bit about watermelon? Yeah, I think you did. <laughs> oh, I thought you were dipping into the Taste Buds archives no, with that no, one. No, that we just great. argued watermelon, and I lost terribly. Because he... I, I'm also now appreciating uh, how good Sal is at going against good. you. Yeah. Because uh, you need that... You need that... What are you talking about? Hot day? Mm -hmm. Hot day? You go home? You have a slice of watermelon, your I mom mean, cuts you a nice triangle of watermelon, it holds together, it's got good like structural integrity. That's exactly, yeah. that, that that's was, a really that was a good, good impression. That's yeah. a good impression. Yo, I'm embarrassed about what I took that I lost with. What do you mean? The fruit I lost to watermelon with, I'm embarrassed. Is it pineapple? Raisins. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you not dying with laughter, the concept of taste buds is you're arguing that raisins 
are better. Than are better. <laughs> and here's how on, on raisins. Raisins are what the crazy old lady with the lights off on Halloween. <laughs> if you go up to a door and, and you insist, Joe, 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 if you insist, she comes out and gives you a, a dry, crusted box of raisins. He brought up Halloween when you get the box of raisins. Yes. And how you want to burn the person. And you want to burn the and you want to burn their house down. And if you do and you're caught, they say you were right. They gave him uh, they gave him some sun kissed raisins. Can we clip it? Can we isolate it? Can we clip it? Can we get it to Sal? Yes, He's this is got the clip. to see this impression. Katie writes down the clips. It's a perfect impression of Sal. It's so good. <laughs> It's perfect. It's well, perfect. I called him Better Holmes, and I'm glad that we. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and his last name is N Gardens. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So tell me, tell me about why you called me the other day. This well, sounds so like I'm loading. Can I, I'll just say you I, called I, me because you wanted to talk about the meaning of life. I wanted to talk about spirituality. Spirituality, and I'm just curious. Outside of a church yes. definition of it, yes. uh, outside of an organized religion approach to it, because yes. I said to you in so many words, and it, it does relate to the story today. I should be happy. I should be happier than I am. Why do I have such a sense of dread about the future? And yeah, and I kind of narrowed in on because I'm making it all about me. There's mm. something bigger than me, mm. and I'm just not connecting to it or focusing on it. And whether that bigger thing is the stars and the sun or the universe or a, a power or whatever. I don't know. I just know that I need to get out of this and like that's right into that. So, and I called you and I said, I think I'm only saying that's right. Cause I have that revelation no, no, no. all the time. No, 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 I, no. I just don't want to sound condescending. Like that's right. No, Joe, you welcome you, to you, the party. You, you didn't at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, By yeah. the way, I love that. That's the thing you thought would sound condescending. You've, <laughs> well, you haven't been right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to me 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, it's just a montage from the whole podcast as the Curb Your Enthusiasm music plays <laughs> underneath it. Oh, my God. Um, but I it doesn't make sense, but I want to call you Paul Giamatti's cheat day. <laughs> I don't, it doesn't even make sense. It's funny, yeah, no, it's funny. <laughs> but so, so like, yeah, you're, you're not just a dear friend and not just a dear friend that's into this stuff, and practices it, but also out of everybody I know, the most equipped to be able to talk, because uh, I do know people that are religious, my parents. Yeah. You're the per, and more than that too, but like, but you're the person that was so equipped to actually take it out of all the stuff that usually gets in my way. Yeah. And, and, and I said to you, I said, I somehow, I was driving, I had my phone plugged in, and I had, it was, I was listening to YouTube clips, I wasn't watching them, and somehow I get onto a YouTube clip of Larry the Cable Guy talking yeah. about his Christianity, Yeah, and so much of what he said about just the practice of life made sense to me. Mm. He lost me when it started to get into the church talk, mm -hmm. and the, and the, you Which know. is a shame, by the way. I'm not putting down Larry. I'm just saying there's certain areas for me too that you can be saying something that I'm just so into. And as soon as you get into like a, for me, it's like us, them, in, out, heaven, hell, we have it, they don't, <laughs> something exclusive, something exclusionary, something fear based. I usually, and I haven't heard the talk you're talking about, that, that I, it's, su it's such a shame that there aren't more places where you can have safe conversations about spirituality. Yeah, and there was, and, and, and not that he was, you know, prickish or anything. Yeah. He was just talking, but there was a rigidity to it that I was not. There was a rigidity to it that the sleevelessness could not relieve. <laughs> he was sleeved. He was he fully was sleeved. sleeved. Yeah. Uh, but no, but it was, there was a rigidity that I couldn't, I was like, there. I'm hearing that tone of the priests I knew growing up. Yep, and, and his I, nails on a chalkboard, right? Yeah, yeah. and um, and I said to Ryan yesterday, <clears throat> I said I, I I look at it like the way a lot of people look at AA. A lot of people go into AA and they go, you got to get past the God part. They're gonna keep saying God in here. That's going to turn you off if you're not a God guy, you know? Don't worry about that. Get to what they're telling you to do about sobriety. Yeah. And that, to me, is the thing 
And I told you, you sent me the Richard Rohr video, which was amazing. Yep. I sent it to my mom. Oh, wow. I haven't discussed it with her yet, but I sent it to her. And I called her when I sent it to her. And I said, I think I finally After found... After you watched it. Yes. I said, I think I finally found the thing uh, that will create some sort of common ground for us in the world of spirituality. Mm. Wow. Uh, by the way, so yeah. much of my spirituality was, was rooted and encouraged by wanting to reconcile and reconnect with my mom, which is That's interesting. interesting. It, it motivates it. I'm not saying it was the point of it, but I'd uncover something that rescued some sort of language or some sort of worldview mm -hmm. or just some sort of perspective. And I, would, I just couldn't wait to share it with her. And when it comes to like Richard Rohr, she's, she's into it too. It's, it's incredible that there's something I could send to my mom. <laughs> And Joe DeRosa and both of you guys are like, this is fucking great. Well, and I said, it's funny because I, I said to my mom, Pete Holmes sent me this. Mm. And she knows you from, she was from, she would watch the show. Yeah. But uh, mm. so, so that was like an interesting little detail, you know? But uh, yeah. she, um, and I, he's, I believe he's Jesuit, correct? Uh, Franciscan. Franciscan, okay. But very similar to the Jesuit. I said, yeah, I said Jesuit to my mom, and she said, oh, that's interesting that Je Jesuits, is very, they're very liberal with... with. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, maybe that's what it is. But I said, he's just... He equates prayer to meditation, which I've done for years. Mm -hmm. But he finally explained, like, why they're similar. Mm -hmm. You know? In, in, let, me, let me rephrase that. He, he made an analogy that wasn't negative. I always made a very negative analogy with that. Mm. I would always go, oh, prayer, it's, it's meditation. It's your, it's your whiskey. It's whatever, it's your tune out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's a very obviously jaded way to look at it. But when you're not feeling hopeful about the world, yep. you know, yep. uh, that's how you'll look at things. This was way more like just like, you know, just the idea of like once the, the thing that he said that really resonated was once he said <clears throat> when he goes prayer or meditation, basically goes whatever you want to call it, like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then he said when you're when there's no goal mm -hmm. and we're putting everything in the perspective of if you're praying to save grandma, you're you shouldn't be praying, which is so interesting mm. because I do like meditation and every time, and I do think it's similar to prayer, but every time my mom has ever said, you should pray for so-and-so, I, I know you're not religious, but I've said no. Mm. And because I'm like, it's, it's, to me, it's a, an absurd thing to do. Mm -hmm. And him saying that, again, the negative t or jaded way to say it is, oh yeah, mom, God's gonna save Mrs. Tulio, or, you know, who was a neighbor of ours that passed. I'm not shitting on her. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Because um, you because you prayed or whatever. Yeah, yeah. She was a very nice lady. But you know what I mean? It's like that's the jaded way. Mm -hmm. The Richard Rohr, Rohr positive way is you shouldn't be trying to trade favors with whoever the higher power is. Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. It's not about that. It's about you staying connected to that to mm -hmm. that thing and staying in like a flow too. It's like yeah. it's like being quiet enough to hear where you belong. Like your story had a lot of flow in it. The story of your life, right? That you just told, your your recent life has a lot of like being quiet enough and still enough to hear what you need and to ask for it and receive it and go with it and to trust and surrender. And that's a lot of what Richard is about. It's, he's all about the 12 steps, by the way. He, he thinks that AA and programs like AA have the brokenness that's missing in Christianity. Like oh, a lot wow. of Christianity is, is so like shiny. I'm speaking about in my own experience. It's very shiny. It's very white teeth, white people, white khakis, you know, mm -hmm. like very shiny. Sure. It's like sort of a religion for winners. And I said this to you, and I've said it a million times on this podcast. People have heard me say this. But Richard says, he's like, the fact that that's the spokesperson for that faith is a naked Jewish loser mm -hmm. who's being murdered, like mm -hmm. who's powerless. Like that's the spokesperson for a religion that we turned into like, you know, help me win the Super Bowl, help me win the client, sure. help me win, help me win, help me sure. win, help me never lose. And we turn it into another way to be like, even when I die, I win. Right. You know what I mean? Where it's like, no, I, and I told you this because I thought you would, because you're this way. Like right. We like getting real and a little bit fierce with things. I, Richard taught me that like baptism is a drowning ritual. It's supposed to be like, 
die now. Don't wait till you die, but get low now. Right. Realize you're full of shit now. Realize it's also beautiful. I'm not saying it's not beautiful. It's a paradox. Right. It's beautiful, but it's also not real. And when you let it go, the paradox is the more of it you get, the richer experience of it you get. But you can't yeah. cling to it. Right. So there's all this like fierce imagery of like death and 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 rebirth and all this stuff, but we've just turned it into like no win as an American, pursue mm-hmm. the American dream, get God rich. God bless America. And then when you die, yeah. you also <laughs> get to go to another gated community. <laughs> yeah, that was an interesting thing he said. About, really? We, oh, it's 2.55. I thought we'd been going for two hours and 55 minutes. He, he okay, we, we, I'll, I'll be quick, but he, he said, uh, the, just the thing he said about, um, I, I'm going to have to watch it a couple of times. It's a lot of information, but the stuff I gleaned at least on this first time, uh, he said, um, you, you, you can, it, it's funny, Holmes, it's Glenn Gary. He goes, if you want to go to hell, you're, you can do it right now. Yeah. If you want to go to heaven, you can do it well, right Richard now. Gore says it's, you can it, live in it. It's, it's, it's hell all the way to hell is something yeah. that he says. It's, hell on earth. I yeah. won't live in it. I won't live in it. It's wild. Yeah, that no, like, is wild. Yeah. Because, and that's his whole thing, is like heaven is a state that you start now. It's a yes to reality. It's a, it's a merging with reality. It's a forgiving. He's all about forgiving reality, that you're not in control, that things aren't happening the way that you would want them, that you can't understand it, but you that, that you show up humble and small anyway and, and it's it's all about surrender in that way it's interesting well, uh, yeah and also too when you take away the concept that there's a guy that's gonna give you things in exchange for behaviors yep um and then turn it into no it's about surrendering surrendering yourself to reality and whatever now obviously richard Rur believes that there is a god and i'm sure he believes that we go somewhere after this ends. And maybe that is the case. I don't know. But let's say it isn't. Let's say worst case scenario. Let's say you die and that's it. You're dead. Yeah. This still makes sense to me as a lifestyle. And that's what I was trying to get to. Mm. That's That to me is what's the important part. It's not about, at least now, it's not about, but I want to have faith in a Lord or whatever. It's about, I want to surrender to reality mm-hmm. and be a natural part of this whole thing mm-hmm. instead of focusing on myself and basically looking at a clicking t- clock, a ticking clock and going, well, and then, I, and then you die and then that's it. You know right, what I mean? Right. That's it. Remember I told you when you called me that religion, and Richard taught me this, is religio, and ligio comes from yeah. the word ligament, it, it's same root, and it's to reconnect you. So it's supposed to make you feel at home in this. That's what Taylor Tomlinson did this podcast yesterday. We were talking about the space photos, and she was like, did that freak you out? And I was like, no, because the same thing that's animating that is animating me. I'm, what I'm do you not, mean the space photos? You know the, the new telescope photos of, of no. the galaxy? There's some new photos. Oh, I didn't see them. So it's like this is hundreds of thousands, like an unimaginable number of planets that, right. that are in these systems. And I'm like... The same operating principles that are behind those are behind me. And I, we were talking about, like, it's an Alan Watts quote, I'm not a stranger here. Like, I, I don't, I'm not a visitor. You know what I mean? And that's, that's religio. That's going like, you're not a mistake. Mm-hmm. It's not a flaw. Right. In fact, this whole thing is, like, Joe fits perfectly into it. You know what I mean? Right. Into it is even misleading. You are it. It's all this. It's all, uh, you're, at, you're already home. And, and then prayer, heaven, hell. And, and contemplation is what Richard's all about too, which is meditating basically with your eyes open, not with a mantra, but looking at all of reality and just saying yes to it and allowing it to change you, being vulnerable enough to let a tree and its existence have an impact on your mm-hmm. heart, getting quiet enough to marvel at the fact that the same thing that's looking out me is looking out you and here we are on a couch and we're just like, not just as a thought experiment, but to get... Joy, mm-hmm. connection, mm-hmm. life. I mean, I even though I know these things, I still watch too much TV and jerk off and all this stuff. And I'm like, I want to, I want to get that good stuff, the yeah. better stuff. Uh, well, I think it's little things. 
I, I'm only speaking from my perspective, but I can only, I can only break it down into little things. So, like, one thing I'm trying to do now is, uh, because the little things will lead to the bigger things in theory, right? But one thing I'm trying to do now, and it's funny, this actually came from Larry the Cable Guy's video. Oh, wow. And Catholics would call it grace, but I am trying to consciously take a moment before I eat to not say thank you to anybody, to recognize the fact that I am able to feed myself again. It's, it's mindful. You're being mindful. Yeah. And again, some people say it's a moment to thank God or Jesus or Buddha, whoever. To me, it's just, as you said, being mindful. It's taking yeah. a beat to go, a lot of people can't do what I just did. Once uh, in a month, let alone any time I want to. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right. It's it's a huge thing. Five, and that's six, it's seven, tough eight with times a day. Huh? Five, six, seven, eight times a day. <laughs> it's funny. I I, I dodged the joke because yeah, I almost said there. I almost said once in a month and I, and I was gonna how am I gonna eat this month? And I was like, don't do it. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Because I don't have to eat this month. <laughs> yeah. But um you know, I, I, I talk to Chris Stefano about this stuff a lot. Cause he's He's a very aware guy, you know, like, mm. like, you know, his, his, he's a very funny guy and his online persona is him, but it's very, you know, it's very light and it's very silly and whatever, but he is a deep guy, like, mm. and he will, and, and, and being in this business is a mind fuck. Mm. And that's one of the things I'll talk to him about is mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just say, Chris, you know, like, I know for a fact I will very likely never have the amounts of money that some of my dear friends have. I might never own a giant house. It's, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm grateful for the shit I do have mm -hmm. because my God almighty, how much worse could it be? It could be a zillion times mm -hmm. worse. Mm -hmm. And that's not me gloating in what I have versus what somebody doesn't, but... If I'm going to sit in in a paid in a in a, in a rent pay, in an apartment I easily pay rent for in New York City every month because I am in a nice apartment now, you know, every month two windows, <laughs> baby. <laughs> but if I'm going to sit in a, in an apartment in New York City that I pay my rent for easily every month, I pay my bills easily every month, I feed myself multiple times a day in that apartment or out of it. I am surrounded by video games and things that I love to buy and collect and have fun and enjoy. I'm going to sit here and go, it's uh, my life sucks because I don't own a giant house. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Off of jokes, oh. off of dumb fucking jokes. I would go a little bit further and say that those things that you have in your house aren't actually what make you happy those because I, I loved your apartment i always used to love going over there would watch me eat smoke a cigarette <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah and and they're your toys yeah. i actually think they help you get into a state where you're calm enough to recognize this is very lofty but recognize your nature like they they calm you down they bring you some nostalgia they yep. bring you some diversion but they allow you to rest in what i'm going to call your your true nature, your true self, which is like that talk, and you're there, and you're happy. What I'm saying is, and this is truly, this is like, yeah. after we cover our Richard Rohr stuff, we'll get into our Rupert Spire, and we'll have all these fun yeah. things. But like, the truth is, uh, the stuff out there, it's a broken model going out for happiness, and I do it too. But going out, getting momentarily happy, then sure, being sad, then going uh, out, yeah. sometimes in the same day, seven, eight times. And Rupert Spira, who I love, says that's like thinking it's normal to be healthy and then sick and then healthy and then sick. He's like, peace is your natural state. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's what meditation is. That's what deep sleep is. Mm -hmm. uh, Rupert says that we're not unconscious when we're in deep sleep. It's not the absence of awareness. It's the awareness of absence. Nothing's going on. So there's nothing to report or remember. But there is an experience. Mm -hmm. Like when you have deep sleep, there is an experience. It's not just nothing and then you're back. Right. There was an experience. And he's saying, so does Ramana Marchi say, that's because your truest, 
who you are when you close your eyes. And I did this with Taylor. She did not bite. It was like when you look at what your awareness is, it's boundless. It's infinite. There's no boundary on the other side of which it isn't, right? That's you. Mm -hmm. And when these things, it's not a big house and it's not your He-Man collection or whatever. I'm I'm not even breaking your balls. No, 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 I know. It's not the toys. It's the stuff that helps us rest and relax it's, and and drop the game get off the treadmill i would i would say um i i i i think i agree with that but i also the the the, the my take one of my other takeaways from the roar video was you can have a possession you just don't cling to it that's right and that valerie th- and i say eckhart Tolle goes i like nice things <laughs> and yeah. he's like the most yeah, I think he's an enlightened being, and he's going around. And he's like, I have a high thread count bed. Yeah, 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 but it doesn't define him. It, right, exactly, yeah, and that's kind of how I look at it. It's like yeah. I love buying the new, you know, complete Friday the Thirteenth Blu-ray franchise set. Yeah, because it's got a cool box and it looks really neat on my shelf, and yeah. and at any time I have a movie marathon at my fingertips. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, but if it was stolen from me. I'm not going to be like, right. well, now what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah, like, well, when it comes to peace you know? and happiness, because I, I have I have funky, chunky days all the time where I'm just pinched. It's like that Eminem lyric where he's like, some days I just feel like my father. I hate to be bothered. Which, by the way, to interject, yeah, are you keeping up with old M? Because What's up? He's doing his best work ever. Oh, really? Those, like, music to be murdered by records yeah. are, like, the best things oh. he's done. Oh, really? Yeah, and Kamikaze. You heard Kamikaze. I like Kamikaze. It's like that extended. There's a few tracks I skip on Kamikaze. Are you checking the time? Yeah, it's actually 3.07. Sorry. You got to go. Yeah, I think so. Just, I don't know how long it takes <laughs> to get to Studio City from here. Yeah, you should go. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 it's not, it's not that, but yeah. Okay. You got to say, keep it crispy. This guy's already getting up. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. We're tra- talking about God. I'm about to tell you about looking for happiness and objective reality. Uh, I will plug it here. Rupert Spira has a book called You Are the Happiness You're Looking For which is just a brilliant book, and it's about what we're talking about. Um, all right. Can I, I plug? I mean, you're going to plug on top of Rupert. Go ahead. <laughs> well, pl- Joey Roses, Yeah. please come. We're open Tuesday through Sunday. That's the, that's the sandwich shop. Yeah. Sandwich shop and bar. Um, please come through. Uh, we're at 174 Rivington Street, New York City. Headed that up. You can go to joeyrosesnyc.com for all the details. Joeyroses.com was taken. No, it was. No, we want. There was. It was because we wanted you know, everything to ma- It doesn't matter. <laughs> you gotta yeah. go. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> JoeyRosesNYC.com for details. Check it out. Uh, please come see us. And uh, and then also, I'm I'm I don't know when this comes out, but I'm I'm back on the road. Uh, my next dates are mid August in Atlantic City, and I'm going all over the place. So go to JoeDeRosaInfo.com. Uh, for tickets and show details, and uh, yeah, that's it. All right, I, I could riff on your website for a while, but <laughs> you gotta go. <laughs> Would you say keep it crispy, Joey? I love you, buddy. Keep it crispy. To all three cameras. This guy's a fucking pro. <laughs> you may win.